bitch. You wanna fight? You wanna fight? You wanna box? You wanna fight? You wanna box? I'm gonna go looking. It's time to go searching. There it is. This is the book that I wanted to read today. The Crying of Lot 49. Whoa! Crazy shit was happening. Look, look at this. Get the fuck off of me. One summer afternoon, Mrs. Adipa Mask came home from a Tupperware party whose hostess had put perhaps too much cash in the fondue to find that she, Adipa, had been named as executor, or she supposed executrix of the estate of one Pierce in Inverarity, a California real estate mogul. What's with Thomas Pynchon and California real estate moguls? Explain. Explain what's with explain that who had once lost two million dollars in his spare time but still had assets numerous and tangled enough to make the job of sorting it all out more than honorary. Oedipus stood in the living room, stared by the greenish dead eye of the TV tube, spoke the name of God, tried to feel as drunk as possible, but this did not work. She thought of a hotel room in Mazatlan, whose door had just been slammed, it seemed forever, waking up 200 birds down in the lobby, a sunrise over the library slope at Cornell University that no one else on it had seen, because the slope faces west, a dry, disconsolate tune from the fourth movement of the Bartok Concerto for Orchestra, a whitewashed bust of Jay Gold that Pierce kept over the bed on a shelf so narrow for it, she'd always had the hovering fear that it would someday topple on them. Was that how he died, she wondered? among dreams crushed by the only icon in the house that only made her laugh out loud and helpless. You're so sick, Oedipa, she told herself, or the room, which knew. Let, let me practice police encounters real quick. I'm just going to, okay, the police have raided my house. Oh, I'm sorry, officer, I seem to have forgotten my password. Oh, I would love to tell you, officer, my password, but I seem my to have forgotten my password. Recording. I see. So I'm not going to make the vlog anymore. You're not going to make the vlog? I just can't be fucked in. You just drag all the clips in. Yeah, but I can't be fucked to do that. I'm just not going to make it. Lazy bones. Lazy bones. <laughs> Lazy bones. Lazy bones. Motherfuckers looking for communications. You know what the best communication platform is? No, it's not Discord. No, it's not Matrix. It's not XMPP, it's not Riot, it's not GNU Jammy. The best communication platform is not email, PGP encrypted or otherwise. No, 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 the best communication platform is Ham Radio. Denpa Ham Radio Group when? Am I right, Dope Smite? Yeah, I think you're right. I'm right. I'm always right. It's a tr it's really a struggle being me. Yeah. And here's why. Yeah. Because I'm always right, <laughs> and everyone knows it. <laughs> it's actually fucked. Mm -hmm. You 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 will have never had this experience, don't smite. Yeah. Okay. As a femoid, mm -hmm. you will have never had the experience of being always right. Yeah. And everyone just knows it. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's a lot of haters out there. There's a lot of haters of particular, and they don't, they, they're, they're flying their colors, I'm flying my colors, my Denpa colors. You know, the, you know the anime girl in the thumbnail of this video, Dote Smite? Yeah. You know the anime girl in the thumbnail of this video um, that I'm recording right which, now? Which are you? You know the one in the thumbnail? Which one? From the thumbnail of this I, video? I, I don't think this so, of this, not that oh, video, uh, of no, the video no, I'm recording no, right no, now. No, no. You know the thumbnail of it? Yeah. 
Yeah. You should have been paying attention to the thumbnail. You still show me. I haven't made it yet. I see. It's called Retro Causality. Yeah. You ever heard of Nick Land? Yeah. Exactly. It's called Templexity. What's her name? The, the thumbnail. The anime girl is the is is I forgot her name. I see. <laughs> but she's the bitch, the blue haired bitch <laughs> from uh, Benpa on that Hoseishun Otoko. <laughs> And I I propose we make her the mascot of Denpa. I see. Here's why. Yeah. Firstly, she's cute as fuck. <laughs> Secondly, she's in a show called she her, the Denpa Onna, the Denpa woman that the name title Denpa Onna Tosation Otoko refers to is her. She <laughs> is the Denpa Onna. Yeah. Right. And thirdly, the OP for Denpo on the Tosation Otoko was made by Shinsei Kamatechan, mm -hmm. the ultimate Denpo band. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the best anime OP ever made. <laughs> And then you got the low keyboard, it goes... You know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. No. I, I don't know. You don't know. Don't lie to me. I'm just... I'm not gonna tell you... I'm not gonna tell you what I am. I'm not gonna let you to know what I am. Respectable. Yeah. Respectable. Yeah. That's the bitch. <laughs> and that's why. You'll never guess. You'll never guess what happened. I just got an email. It was an email. Your boy is officially autistic. I'm so autistic, the government decided to give me an email about it. Oh, whoa! Whoa, crazy raining. Crazy hail, maybe. I think it was just hailing a second ago. Whoa! Those might just went out to the shops. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! That was bad timing. That was very poor timing. Just before it started going, it was just lightly raining, and now it's going crazy. That's unfortunate. Mr. Beast says a lot about the collapse of Western civilization, you know? You ever feel like Mr. Beast says a lot about the collapse of America? Because it's like, of course, the only thing people care about is like, oh, what's going to be the most popular YouTuber? It's just reality TV shows where people win lo like loads of money. Like, that's all, that's all people dream about. It's currently 7.30 a.m. because I've been up all night now filming Silicon Valley TV show, which is a pretty decent TV show. Mostly I just like it because it's you get to watch Techno Babble on a TV show that's actually accurate for the same reason that I liked um, Hacker Man show, whatever the fuck it's called, Mr. Robert. Um, I wanted to talk about how that one time when I was like in uh, nursery school slash primary schools, so I guess I would have been five or six, um, when I, uh, uh, permanently injured a, a girl, <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I swung a big plastic stick thing at a girl, knocking her tooth out, we should have been fine, you know, we're, 
baby teeth. We were both the same age. But I damaged the nerve in her mouth, meaning that her adult teeth would never actually grow in, permanently damaging her her dentals. Um, and as far as I heard, her parents were, like, thinking of pursuing some sort of, like, weird legal action against my parents because of it. Um, and I, of course, got the blame for this. Um, I, I barely remember it. But 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 the the true full story is, first of all, these were big plastic... I, I don't even know how to describe them. I don't think they were toys. Like, looking back on it, I think they were, like, probably pieces to some sort of bigger structure, like, like a, like, I don't know, like a little toy house or something. I, I, I don't know what it was, but they, like, they, they were just these, like, big, it was like a pole with, like, an axe head type looking, it wasn't really an axe head, but it was like a sticky out bit at the end, sort of like an axe head might be. And, uh, the school just let like the 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 school just left these out in the playground at, like for us to play with, so that should never have happened, first of all, and secondly, everyone used to fucking hit each other with these things all the fucking time. Like I got bruises from being hit with these things. This was like a normal occurrence. The only one single time I ever decided to play with them, the first time I swung it at someone. I happened to hit this girl in the mouth, knocking her tooth out and permanently, permanently injuring her. Isn't that fucked? I think that gives you a, a good taste of, of my luck in life. That's about a good taste of my 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 average luck. Hi, this is a uh, bug report for uh, God. I seem to have found some sort of bug in the human mind, in particular my, my mind. Um... It seems like 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 a, something somewhere has gone wrong, and there's there's a, a, a the wrong variable is being incremented. So um, the the way that the function is supposed to work, uh, as you stay up for longer, uh, your desire to sleep increases. But instead, for some reason, uh, my desire for pepperoni pizza is increasing, and my desire for sleep is staying the same which is low, so I think there's a bug, there's a bug going on there, right, because you're supposed to get, get tired and get sleepy, not get an increased desire for pepperoni pizza over time, so we're going to have to sort that one out one way or another, right now I'm thinking I might just, I don't know what I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking. Everything's going wrong every every time. I have these pizza pockets. What if I just had a pizza pocket? Do you think that would satiate my desire? I think not. I think I need a proper pepperoni pizza to sate my desires. And what's more... I think I could get one from the local shop. However, this seems unwise. Welcome to the quest for morning. There's a uh, a certain event coming up. And uh Okay, let's start let's try that again. Welcome to the quest for morning or whatever the fuck I'm calling. Whatever the fuck I just said. Um, there's a certain event coming up. Fuck! Ah, shit. I just spilled fucking cereal all over me. Fuck! Fuck! Now I'm covered in fucking milk and cereal. Fuck! Shit. Fuck. Now everything's covered in fucking cereal. Mmm. Cereal. Fuck. Oh, I got on the fucking duvet as well. Shit, that's gonna smell really bad. Fuck. Oh yeah, I gotta go change my <laughs> fucking clothes. <laughs> Shit. We're off to a good start.
basically, I have to stay awake for a long time to try and because I I'm nocturnal right now. I'm gonna go change my clothes. This is a uh, cute girls do cute things anime um, spreadsheet I'm making. It breaks it down by the manga magazine. So the the two main ones are Manga Ten Kirara and Kyun. Uh Kirara is split into four different magazines. Kirara, Kirara Miracle, Kirara Max, Kirara Carrot, and Kirara Forward. Kirara Miracle is cancelled, and Kirara Forward is the only one that isn't exclusively on karma format. Uh, and then Kune is not just um, cute girls doing cute things. It's also a lot of other stuff. There is also some cute girls doing cute things manga, like um, uh, Tension of 3P, for example, that are in different magazines uh, that aren't exclusively Cute Girls Doing Cute Things uh, magazines, which I'm considering, I guess I should add it, but these are like the ones that are mainly focused on that. And then I'm marking them as either seen with a green, yellow for dropped or on hold, uh, or yellow for on hold, red for dropped, and uncolored for uncolored. And I'm going through and I'm like, I, I dropped kind of memo, but I liked kind of memo. Why did I... Why did I drop it? This was the problem with being a fucking Digibo fan. Because Digi was like, oh, if you at any point feel like a show isn't 100% perfect, you should drop it. And I fucking bought that until I've now changed my mind in my modern era where I'm like, um, you should try and finish a show. Even if it's uh, not that great, you should try and finish it because, you know, it's fun to see. At least you can say you finished it and you'll probably get something out of it, even if it's not amazing. Uh, you know, uh, don't only finish good shows or you'll, uh, you can still get something interesting out of a show that isn't amazing. But I didn't have that attitude back when I watched some of these, so I, I'm going to need to go back and rewatch kind of memo. Uh, but anyway, these are, these are the ones. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and my plan is to watch every cute girls doing cute things show and then buy, I will have beaten anime. I will have completed anime, and then I will never have to watch anime again. <laughs> have to, as if it's like this terrible thing. Um, and I'm pretty close. Uh, let me. I'll, I will finish marking this um, chart that I've made. Obviously, there are some, like, um, for example, the, the obvious one being a, a Lucky Star that isn't an adaptation, it's an anime original. There, there are various ones like that. Um, there's also, like, this is not complete yet, but this is, this is a basic. We're getting, we're gonna get there. It's gonna take a while, but we're gonna fill this out entirely. Okay, it is done. Here's the key. We've got a. Oh my god, struggling. Plan to watch is is uncolored. Um. Completed is green, yellow, red, blue for watching. And here we can see, broken down by magazine. These are sort of the main ones. Uh, like, Mangatan Kirara, all its variants, Denki Dai, Dengeki Daio and Kyun, sort of the main ones. Uh, I guess Comic Earth Star, also kind of one of the main ones. And then it sort of gets a lot like there's just like one anime adaptation for a lot of the smaller magazines. Seems like Mangatam Kirara Carrot has has the most anime adaptations of any young comma slice of life magazine. Um I guess I I will go through and talk about why I dropped these. So Urara Meirocho I really wanted to like, but uh, I I just found that the character is kind of obnoxious to be honest. Like that's gonna be a lot of these is like there was nothing, like, really wrong with them on a the technical level, just the characters were kind of not fleshed out in the same way that a good show might be. Like, uh, for example, um, uh, where is it? Tonari no Kyuketsuki-san, I believe it's in one of the Yuri magazines. Uh, or whatever. Tonari no Kyuketsuki-san, for example. Oh, here it is. Um, it's on hold, not dropped, but, like, like, I like the character designs. I think it's well-directed. I think it's kind of funny. It's, like, equally funny as some of the other ones. Like, it's not it's not hilarious, but it's not terrible. Um, 
Um, yeah, uh, but the, the characters just like aren't like I just want a little. I want like a little more about the characters' motivations and stuff. Like they're just not as likable as some of the some of the really good slice of life. Um, still haven't seen Me Meet and Mary or Hana Yamata, Dojin Work, Anima Yell, Kurosawa. Like out of all of the the manga time Kirara ones, the only ones I haven't seen: Sel no Maho, Dojin Work, Anima Yell. Close to Asteroid. I mean, these two aren't even out yet. <laughs> um, I've actually seen the first episode of Close to the Asteroid, and I wasn't in the mood for it. Um, Dream Me to Mary, Hana Yamata, Halitana Massive, and that's it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven shows. Technically ten if you count um, the two that aren't out yet, and you might... You might be able to lower that, you know, I haven't finished RPG Fudosan because it's still airing. Um, and this one, Jokamachi, uh, Jokamachi no Dandirayan, I'm actually watching right now. Like, I, I just started it today, so we'll see where that takes me. Um, but yeah, there's some of these, like, more obscure ones, I guess. Moke, never heard of it. Nekogami Yaoyorozu, never heard of it before. Uh, yeah, some of these I haven't. Yeah, Rifle is Beautiful. Yakunara Magu Kapo Mo. Never heard of that before. Um, I also put some stuff in here that's questionable. Like I put Senko San, which isn't really a cute girls doing cute things show. I put um, uh, Maho Shoujo Nante Mo Ideskara, which tech, I, isn't really a cute girls doing cute things show because the main character is a guy, kind of. Uh, Mayo Chiki, main character is a guy. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, Blend S. I guess the main character is kind of a guy. I don't know if it counts or not. Uh, Ranking Sun Q Magic. I guess that counts. Um, I, I even put Arrow Manga Sensei in here just for the fuck of it. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I, I, I'm going for stuff that sort of has the vibe of a cute girls doing cute things show. I haven't actually seen Mayo Chiki, so I don't know like what the vibe of that show is I'm just guessing at the vibe from from the Mal page and stuff by the way Mal fucking awful for doing shit like this like I, you'd think that Mal would be like the peak of autism but like there's a bunch of shows that they just don't have the information for or the information is wrong and I have to like do my own research really fucking annoying um yeah a lot of these have made me think back to the the Digibo times and how um how he fucked me. He fucked me by, by making me drop a show. Like, as soon as you don't like a show, you just drop it. It's, it's fucking stupid. And I'm I'm glad I don't do that anymore. I'm glad I, like, grind through shows, even if it's a painful experience uh, sometimes. I'm glad I don't just drop a show at this first, like a pussy. Because you know what that is? That's being a pussy bitch, right? If you drop a show at the first sign that there's something you don't like... As being a pussy bitch, some you gotta give you gotta give the show a bit of credit. Now, yes, a lot of these shows don't earn the credit, right? There's some shows like um, uh, um, let me think, what's that one fucking show? Oh, whatever. There's some shows, right, where it's like the show might not be that good, like the comedy might not be that good, the girls might not be that cute or something, but um, in the early parts of the show. It does something really good with the characters that makes you give the show the benefit of the doubt um, and and want to con con proceed with it, uh, uh, right? But some shows don't do that, like uh, yeah. But you just gotta you gotta you gotta give these anime the benefit of the doubt sometimes. So in total, until I beat anime, because obviously who wants to watch anything other than cute girls doing cute things? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. This is a four episode of VA. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine shows 
I have 29 shows plus these on hold ones, but not counting the on hold ones. I will have beaten anime. I will have watched every cute girls doing cute things show. I only have 29 shows to go, and then I will have watched every single one. Isn't that fucked? I mean, there's someone here that I have, you know, like, some of these have multiple series. Like, for example, um, let's see, there was one that I marked as, as watched, but they haven't, yeah, like, Tamayura, is that the one I'm thinking of? I've only watched the first season of Tamayura. There's, like, four seasons. Um, same with some of these other ones, but I've only watched the first season. So there, there is actually more than this. Um, plus, there's obviously shows that are, like, on the edge, on the borderline, some that I've watched that I didn't count, some that I haven't seen that I don't know if they should count or not. Like, uh, for example, I didn't put, uh, I didn't end up putting Mahoraba on this list, even though I think it kind of has the vibe of a cute girls doing cute things show. It just has too many men in it for me to count it in good faith. Um, and some of these shows are like, anyway, it's not, it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but uh, it is satisfying seeing how many of these are green. You know, is there a way to flip? Can I can I flip the um? Is there some commands to to just flip the axes? Because I feel now right now I'm looking at it and I think it'll be better if the, the magazines were on the side. Uh, I'm gonna have to look up how to do that. It's much nicer now. You can actually fucking see. Now you can actually see everything on the screen at once. Um, you can see how. Manga Time Kirara Carrot has the most. Denki, Dengeki Dayo Kyun, uh, Comic Alive, which is one I didn't even know. I didn't even know about Comic Alive. But what's interesting about this is you can see like the the quality of each of these um, uh, magazines. Like Manga Time Kirara, so like all of the Kirara and Dengeki Dayo. Dengeki Dayo shows are like the best quality ones and then like when it comes to like all of the Yuri ones all come from Comic Yuri Hime and Comic Yuri Hime S uh, <laughs> and then like then you have like Kyun which is like all of the 6 out of 10 ones <laughs> Panda Peace, Nyanko, Te Nyanko Days Hinako No, Alice or Alice it's like a 4 out of 10 and Tonai no Kiketsuki San like all of these which are like sh like the, the low tier ones all come from Kyun and then like uh same with like Comic Alive, they all have like the kind of weird ones that don't have the same feeling as all the other ones will come from Comic Alive. Like the ones that you've always watched, like you've always watched these shows and been like, these are clearly slice of life shows, but they feel like they come from a different like angle at it than all the other ones. It turns out that's because they all come from a different magazine. And then Comic Earth Star is like um, kind of the weird stuff with like a lolly focus. Isn't that interesting? Uh yeah, that's that's super fucking cool, I think. Like you can you can actually get a sense of like and some of these get moved around like uh uh like not all of them like manga don't always stay in the same magazine. Um which I think is interesting. So like uh, for example, let me uh like um uh Yuri Yuri started in Comic Yuri Hime S and then moved to Comic Yuri Hime the normal one. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, I don't know. I find that cool. Um, be nice to organize these by color and also organize the lists by most entries. Let's see if I can do that. I ended up dropping Draw Kamachi no Dandirayon. I think it might have been watchable, but I was it, it was like a a low five type of show. Like, like, really, very little of interest going on there. Um, yeah, kind of a, firstly, not really a cute girls doing cute things show, necessarily. I'm not sure what to call it. Honestly, just wasn't that good. <laughs> just, yeah. Um, so, I decided instead to start watching uh, Ochi Kobore Fruit Tart. Uh, and this is is brilliant. That's a this is a great fucking show. This is like a strong eight. I, uh, wonderful. It's got all of the the things you want in a in a, in a moe. Cute girls doing cute things. Anime. 
also we've made it to almost we've made it to eleven thirty almost midday um I've been entertaining myself by watching anime and um playing uh video games playing playing um euro truck simulator turns out you don't wanna crash when you're driving a big truck turns out um crashing bad don't don't there's a reason they say don't text and drive because um text someone while driving big crash big crash also made some bread flat bread i was like i want i want bread we don't have any bread so i made some some flat bread it was all right kind of plain <laughs> I just put some cheese on it. It's all right. No, nothing wrong with it. Um, so, yeah. The, the sleepiness is, is kicking in for real now. But uh, I'm going to try and finish this, this, this show. I'm, I'm six episodes in, so halfway through. Uh, and if I can finish this show, I will say I have stayed up for long enough. Um... Yeah. That's my goal. <clears throat> so honestly I did a really terrible job of documenting for a for a bit that was supposed to be about how I'm gonna entertain myself while trying to stay awake and fend off sleep deprivation. <sighs> Sorry, I'm out of breath because I just Worked out. Yeah. Yeah, I work out. No. This is a weird fucking noise. The fuck animal is making that noise? Fuck was that? Anyway, for for a video that's supposed to be about me fending off. Anyway, so here's what I got up to. So I was first, I was trying to watch this show called Jo Com no Dandelion, uh, or Castle Town Dandelion, uh, because. It's in my, because at the time I was making this, um, Excel, Cute Girls Don't Cute Things Ultimate Excel Spreadsheet, which you have definitely seen, um, this was it. Now you'll notice it's in red, red means dropped, because the show, it's alright, I probably could have finished it, I'm just going to be real with you, like, probably not like a 100% everyone like this is a terrible show um not on like yeah not like panda peace for example or um right uh, yeah not like panda peace more like a i don't know but but i watched like three episodes of it and uh, yeah i just it, it, i wasn't really vibing with it so i dropped it gave it a 5 and I decided to pick up uh, this um, anime. Where, where did I put it? Um, what? Uh, it's a manga turned to a carrot carrot adaptation. Ochikobore fruit furutsukato, um, which is uh, about dropout idol group so it's an idol group composed of p- 
people who um, have are like dropouts, like they failed at doing something and they sort of became idols. So, like one of them failed at becoming a fashion model. One of them failed at becoming like a regular musician, like a guitarist. One of them failed at being, um, well, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, um, and that show was fucking great. Um, like, um, like really surprisingly good. Everything I like about Manga Ten Kidada adaptations, just, just per- really good. Really, really solid show. I gave it an eight. Watched the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, just really funny the uh, all the whole way through the characters really endearing. Um really interesting, like unique. They they play with, like have interesting takes on that extent. They press the button. They have interesting takes on the sort of classic anime tropes and stuff. Um interesting twists on it. Uh and they all have really good chemistry together. And the idol music itself was actually kind of not bad, sometimes even funny. Um, yeah, each of the characters was, like, well-written, well-rounded, had, like, clear motivations, goals, good backstory, good chemistry, blah, 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 right? It, it, it just all worked well together. The pacing was on fucking point. You know me, I love that young comma pacing. Um, and it it just hammers you over the head with the, this, like, perfectly nailed young comma adaptation like I don't know who the director is, but uh, like, you, it's it's really well, it's really well paced uh, in, in for exactly the sort of way I like uh, a manga tankyard adaptation to be paced. Um, and there was also a really good smattering of of like nice Yuri and um, etchy stuff, fan service stuff, but never overbearing, but also never like like in a way that felt like it was sort of holding back or teasing or like prudish it was it was like often played for comedy in a in a really like smart way not in a sort of like sleazy way sometimes in a sleazy way but you know not actually well done fan this is what i'm saying um that like makes sense for the characters and makes sense for the world and uh I just thought it was a really well executed show, like a really, really great show. I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend Ochi Kawode Fruit Um Maybe just because I'm sleep deprived, but I thought it was great. Um, only has 9,000 users on now, so um, definitely get on that. Um, yeah, uh, no, I, I think this is a really underrated show, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, it, it looks pretty good as well, like um, the, the art direction animation. Are, are solid. They're not nothing, nothing to write home about, but they're nothing bad. Especially, also one one interesting thing. One thing I really like is the uh, the sort of um, in a lot of uh, slice of life anime, uh, they'll have these sort of like uh, alternate versions of the character models. Probably the most famous one being Hidemari Sketch, where the the character models will sometimes become very wide, uh, obviously, right? Where like normally, if the characters are t- talking dead, they look sort of normal. And but sometimes they become wider, you know, when they're expressing certain emotions. Blah blah blah. Right? There, a lot of psychic life shows do this. There's uh Hinako Note makes the characters small. Um various slice of life shows do various different plays on this. Um and the the, the sort of modified version of the character designs in this, they sort of look like big cones, long stretched out cones with just their heads on top and it's it's fucking like a really funny, goofy, and it, but also like weirdly expressive. Uh, I, I I thought it was really well done. Uh, who's the director? This guy, uh, Keichiro Kawaguchi. What's he worked on? Uh, Naruto, Masamune Kun's Revenge. Of uh, uh, what's he directed? Uh, he directed Myochiki. Um, he directed Oni Ai. Oh, for only for some episodes. And Yan Koi, I've never heard of that. He directed um, Higurashi uh, Go, the, the, one of the recent Higurashi adaptations. Um, oh, he directed Hayate the Co- Hayate the Combat Butler. Um, oh, and he directed Gaoko Chan. Yeah, this, as you can tell, this guy fucking knows his shit. He direct. Yeah, this is not surprising. He directed the fact that he directed Gaoko Chan is not surprising. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, oh, he directed the other 
recent Higurashi adaptation. Um, what else? Fantasy Star Online 2, the animation. Uh, oh, this fucking thing. This weirdo... He directed this weird OVA that I've seen that no one else has seen. Uh, Kaware Kake no Orgel. Orgel. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, um, Flame Arms Girl. That's a fucking show that exists. Um, oh, he worked on Moetan. Yeah, that's also not surprising. One of the later seasons of Minami K. Uh, wow, this guy has worked on a shitload of stuff. Um, uh, uh, he's done multiple stuff with Minami K. Uh, oh, he worked on Nurse Witch Komori Chan R. Akihabara Den no Gumi, a show that no one except me knows about. Oh, he directed Yutori Chan? Yutori Chan's good, even though I dropped it. It's it's okay. Good might be a bit of a stretch. Utori Tan is is interesting, and a bunch of old shit that no one cares about. What else? Pinky Street. The fuck is that? Anyway, guy guy knows what he's doing. Um. Yeah, Minami K guy. He's cool. I'd say. Uh, director knows his shit. Screenwriter is another shit. Good fucking anime. Uh, there you go. Those are my thoughts on that. Um, was there anything else I wanted to bring up with regard to that show? Um, not really. Uh, yeah, no, I think I said pretty much what I wanted to say without going, like, too in-depth. Uh, so then aside from that, um, I bought uh, two video games. I bought, uh, I bought Euro Truck Simulator 2, and I bought uh, Galgun 2 Double Piece. Uh, two extremely base video games. Um, I've been wanting to play Euro Truck Simulator for years, same and Gal and Galgun also for years, since I saw Funhouse play it many many years ago. Um, Galgun surprisingly deep gameplay, surprisingly good game, like actually fun to play, um, very satisfying uh, shooting mechanics, surprisingly complex and and deep mechanics, um, also. I mean, if you don't know what Galgun is, uh, just yeah, I, I guess just look it up. Galgun Double Piece, or just Galgun, I guess. Um, uh, it's an on-rail shooter uh, slash kind of a visual novel. <laughs> Not really. I, I don't think I can stretch it. And it, it has like inspirations. From, it has clear inspiration from the visual novel slash dating sim genre. Uh, be sure your gay genre uh but it's uh it's a it's an on rail shooter um and uh obviously your truck simulator is simulating driving a truck played it played a bunch of that played like three or four hours of your truck simulator and through the first like four or five levels of galgan two um i have to say your truck simulator uh that's a brilliant game. Although I I do I do uh the physics are a bit wonky, right? Like like sometimes you crash and it's like it should be a minor scrape, but somehow the physics bugs and you just go f like like one of the first crashes like not crashes in in like the game crashed, but crashes in and I crashed into a wall with my truck. Um, it just slammed the front of my truck down into the earth, uh, like it clipped through the floor. And then, like, I was taking damage on every frame. Uh, that was kind of fucked up. Brutally difficult game, to be honest. Um, 
I mean, when I say brutally difficult game, what I mean is, um, <laughs> what I mean is, uh, when you're when you're playing like a retard, trying like speeding constantly and like like trying to like uh, be be a bit of a go on a bit of a joyride, <clears throat> it's clear that the game does not like that. Uh, yeah, I I assume that I'll probably do a stream playing. Um, Euro Truck Simulator at some point soon because that seems like a great game to stream. Uh, yeah, I had fun driving around, driving around in my truck, uh, failing a lot, getting a lot of fines for speeding and and crashing, um, having to get towed a lot. But damn, am I am I I'm I'm kind of amazed at how much I managed to get away with. To be perfectly honest with you. <sighs> and then Galgan, I mean, yeah, there's not really much to say about that game. Except that, as usual, I'm kind of cracked at first person shooters because CSGO practice. And speaking of first person shooters, I also played a little bit of CSGO. Um, I didn't actually, I played some Wingman while I was watching a. That that first show, the 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 dandelion show, um, because it was boring, and I so I was like playing Wingman, like not really paying attention to Wingman, but not really paying attention to the anime either. Um, and then I realized like, oh shit, what am I doing? So I tried to stop playing Wingman and <laughs> tried to pay attention to the anime, and that's when I realized that the show was boring. Uh, and then I played a li- I I did a little bit of just fun jumping on, like, some HNS servers, uh, just, like, mindlessly movement, just what, with the anime playing. Um, I, 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 I can understand enough Japanese that I don't have to always read subs. Like, I can, I've talked about this before. You watch enough anime, you won't, you won't have to be constantly looking at the subs to understand the general gist of what's going on in the show. Uh, but, you know that wasn't. I didn't do that for very long because I was like, I should. I, I actually want to just pay attention to the anime. Uh, and then I. So that was the other thing I did. And then right at the end, just now, pretty much, uh, after Dot Smoke woke up, I played about four or five minutes of Doom Eternal, which I've never played before. I've I've only ever played the original Doom. Uh, that's it. Um, I used to say the original Doom was one of my favorite games. It's no longer one of my favorite games. I, I have some problem. Well, I, I I don't know. I it's I still think it's obviously a great game, but um, I think it's a bit more janky than I remember it being. But I have not played any of the the Doom 2016 or Doom Eternal before. Um, and I was curious to see what it would be like. I've always thought that I would love Doom Eternal. Um, but then, as soon as Dotes might got Doom Eternal, suddenly my brain um, switched sides. Not necessarily for contrarian reasons, but but just because I think I was confronted with the possibility that I was actually going to play it for the first time. And then suddenly, all of these, my brain suddenly went, "Oh, all of these mechanics are going to be things you actually have you have to do, not just watch someone on YouTube do." Uh, that sounds like it might be kind of annoying. And my brain was kind of right. I didn't play that that much of the games. I I I played through just enough to sort of get an idea of the core gameplay loop. Um, really, I uh, like the feel of the game. I have to say, Doom Eternal is extremely carried by its sound design. Um, it's super carried by its sound design. Uh, uh, the honestly, the animations aren't even that good. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. Like the the uh, the the animations when you do like a melee kill, I I feel like are like really hyped up, but they're I I don't know I I, I don't really get anything out of them at all. Um, not to be too critical, like the the shooting feels great again, mostly because of the sound design. But the the weapons are like you know they're well integrated mechanically. They're 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 very well integrated. Um, the 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 thing that I'm not sure about. Is I mean the first person platforming, obviously it's first person platforming, it's and it's not in the Source engine, so it's not that good. It's not that bad, but um, 
yeah, I don't know. But the main thing that kind of pissed me off about the game is how slow your movement speed is, man. God, I've been playing like boomer shooters. I've been playing Dusk. I've been playing Post Void. Like I, 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 I've been playing CS:GO, B hopping everywhere. Like, and the CS:GO has a fairly fast movement speed compared to a lot of other shooters. Um, even like I, I felt so sluggish in Doom Eternal. It was really annoying. Like I kept trying to jump places, but jumping doesn't make you any faster. Like I, I just felt like I was really slow, to be honest, and it, it was kind of frustrating. Um, but but that aside, obviously the main sort of gimmick of of Doom Eternal is um, killing enemies um, with different weapons gains different resources, right? So you can you can melee kill an enemy for and and they drop health, or you can chainsaw kill an enemy and they drop ammo, and you you juggle your resources. Um. I'm not 100% convinced. I'm just going to be real with you. I'm not 100% convinced. I I felt like uh, the the melee kill to get health is kind of... I don't know. Like, I feel like in the original Doom, if you get hit, you fucked up, right? Like, it's... it's, Like, because it's easy to get health any time really unless you're like in a in a crowd and and even then and the only reason it's difficult is because your movement options are limited in the early game i know that as the game goes on you unlock different movement perks and i assume that it will get easier to escape from like a a, a crowded situation uh but but uh like the fact that you can just get health by by melee killing an enemy at any time is kind of like I don't know. It makes me. It's like, why would you ever not melee kill an enemy? <laughs> like, I, I, I basically either had a hundred health or zero at any at any given time. Um, I felt like, um, I don't know. I felt like I, I definitely need longer with the game to memorize some of the, the like the enemy AI and stuff. Um, uh, I was playing on on um. Uh, help me plenty, I believe. No, no, I, the one above that. Uh, nightmare? Yeah, I think Nightmare. Um, the the hard difficulty. I was playing on the hard difficulty. It wasn't that hard at all, really. It was a pretty... It, um, yeah, it, I, I don't know. Not not as hard as, as, as other shooters I've played. Um... But yeah, I just kind of wanted to like, I like, I wanted to move. I wanted to schmove, man. I wanted to schmove, and be and be fucking like, fucking these guys up, melee killing and shit. But even if you get any schmovement going, as soon as you do a chainsaw kill or a melee kill, you're locked into a previous animation uh, for the next ten seconds. It takes all the momentum out of the fight, and and you're just carried by the fact that the music's still going and pumping and the music's really good so you feel like you're engaged but honestly like watching an animation play out is is not really very fun gameplay for me and i i i didn't think it yeah this was one of the things i was worried about it's like watching watching these animations play out it's also like it's not entirely clear how far away you can like you're you're sort of teleport to the nearest enemy you're like teleport across the map if you melee kill an enemy from far away (laughs) Uh, which which felt kind of like weird. It felt kind of janky to me. Um, I understand like this is like the classic sort of modern dev thing, which is well, it feels bad if a player, uh, our our, our test test players uh, complained that they tried to melee kill the enemy and they 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 were too far away or they missed and that felt bad uh, for them. That made them feel bad. So we have to make the uh, melee more forgiving so that it has a wider radius and less precise aim. Um, I, like, I get that, uh, but why not just make a fucking first-person shooter, for God's sake? Uh, if you want to have a melee game, what, what's that one game that has actually good melee combat? Oh, yeah, Dark Souls. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the 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 souls born nekiro souls born nekiro ring is that what it's called these days 
Souls Born Echo didn't ring. Souls Born Echo didn't ring. Yeah. Alright. If you're not that, don't bother. Or, like, have a fucking mechanics to the melee combat instead of just press press E. That's it. Press E. I, I didn't feel like I was doing anything that... Rec- like, like my character, Doom Guy, was, was ripping and tearing, as he does, right? But but I didn't feel like I'd... Like, nothing about it... it the thing is, the animations feel like something that should be a, a reward, right? They're like a serotonin release. But I never did anything difficult to get into a position where I would get that that satisfying animation, Right? Like, it was always easy to close the distance on enemies. Um, and it, if you're melee killing, it doesn't matter if you take a risk because you're literally going to get health by doing it. So it doesn't matter if you take a hit in the process because you just, you're about to heal yourself. Uh, so I, I, I felt like that was, like... I felt like very quickly my brain is going to get over that that reward process, you know? Uh, and it's just going to become sort of a uh, mundane. Uh, it, it already sort of did. Um, uh, I I like that there's like different. I I I I understand the sort of the flow like the flow state that people describe the dance. People describe it as a dance, right? Where you're sort of like switching between weapons and different modes in the weapons and different melee attack, chainsaw attack. You're juggling all of these different things at, at one time but it all sort of smoothly gels together. And I have to say that is incredibly well executed. And it's sort of unique. And I, I definitely appreciate the game for doing that. But I again, I I would be... If you played it on mute, I think the game would feel way worse. Like, I, I think the combat in that game would just feel not very good if you played the game on mute. Um, it is so carried by its sound design, which is fine. You know, if it's fun to play, it's fun to play. It doesn't matter what what is making it fun to play, as long as it's fun to play. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just like I felt like the game was rewarding me for nothing, um, and and then like the ways you would die would be for like stupid shit instead of like the stuff that is like like I feel like I want to die in like a risk reward type of way. You know, like I want to die from taking a stupid risk. I don't want to die from mundane gameplay and always get rewarded for taking risks. That doesn't. That's not fun. And then there's no risk risk taking at all. Then you're just playing the game. Then you're just you're just doing things, and, and there is no risk reward. Anyway, I've talked for way too long about a game that I played for literally five minutes. I I need much more experience with the game to actually know what the fuck I'm talking about. Euro Truck Simulator, good game. Okay, let's see if I've set up BSPWM enough times that I can nail it. First shot. We switch to BSPWM. We're in. We have a mouse. We have a bar. Do we have keybinds? I forgot to install D menu. Uh, okay, we do not have keybinds. We do not have keybinds, but we do have a desktop. And the keybinds is the easiest bit to set up. So I can do that. We also don't have a wallpaper. That's because the SXHKD script is normally in my XNA RC. I'm going to need to put it in my BSPWM RC because Dotsmite's going to be using XFC, whereas I'm using this. Oh, and what's fucking amazing about this is not only did it work, but both monitors work. That's shocking. Did not expect that. Um, yeah, no keybinds, unfortunately. Uh, so I'll have to go in and fix that. But this is a this is a win for me, by my standards. Um, this is about as good as it gets. <laughs> just listening to Tetsu Territory as I always do, and I just got really fucking mad. And here's why I got really fucking mad. Because I was, I just realized what, te- like, in the 2000s, okay, back when the world was good and anime was good, anime people were the peak of memes. These days, memes aren't even memes anymore. I'll go on a long rant about that at some point. 
Okay, just to preface, I'm so fucking shit right now. I'm so fucking tired, and I was went climbing yesterday, so I'm super fucking aching and tired and dying and fuck. Anyway, really fucking pissed me off. Just, I pissed myself off. I made my, I fucking made myself so mad. Anime used to be the peak of internet and memes and look at imagine how high effort like all of these old vocaloid videos are like most of them are like hand animated shit someone went in and fucking made this song and it's like god tier and all all the the old fucking like mads and stuff where they're like super fucking high effort right and and then like the old like youtube poops like the old anime youtube poops and the old amvs Super fucking high effort, high quality shit. And now, anime memes are like, gen- like everyone know it's even a meme to say how bad anime memes are because of fucking redditor children. They're just like, Onesan, Ara Ara moment, FBI, fuck, 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 fucking die, die, fucking explode, fuck that shit off. Fuck us, you know. Fuck. Die, fucking cunts. Fuck. It makes me so... I'm so fucking mad right now. We had a good thing going and Reddit fucking ruined it. Fuck. Fucking fuck. We had the... This is the fall of the white race. <laughs> there has not been a greater fall from glory since since white people. I'm telling you. <laughs> Anime memes, there's not been a greater fall from glory than since white people. Fuck. Fucking shit. Fucking cunts. Fuck. There used to be, there used to be good things in the world. There used to be fucking good things in the world. And now there's no fucking good things in the world, and memes aren't even memes anymore. Memes aren't even fucking memes anymore. Meme just means funny video now. Doesn't even mean... Meme. Doesn't mean anything. It's a meaningless word. Fuck. I hate everything. I fucking hate everything. I fucking hate Reddit. I hate... Normies. I hate fucking the Adju. I hate... Fucking... It, this. I hate it. This is what the world should be like. I fucking hate the fact that fucking anime memes, r slash anime memes, fuck you. 4chan isn't doing much. What's 4chan done? You're like, oh, you can always rely on 4chan to make memes. 4chan is a fucking dead meme in itself. Like, what what fucking, like, anime shit has 4chan even come up with recently? Like, what have we got mm-hmm. that, like, that, like, like works, you know, that, like, spreads the, or that, like, is it actually a meme, catches on as a meme? Fuck all. There's, like, forced ass memes, but they don't even matter. Like, and, like, very niche, like, S4S stuff or very niche stuff with, like, it, it, in, like, some A threads where it's, like, there's, like, running jokes in A threads, but they're not, like... They don't catch on as memes. Because they're, like, good, you know? And that's fine. I I, I appreciate it. I appreciate, like, stuff like that. But the, in terms of, like, what have, the only thing that 4chan's done, notably with anime memes, in the past, like, decade is, like, they've always been doing it, is making, like, m- fucking meme edits of anime images where they make them Nazis. That's literally it. Like, yeah. What what are we supposed to do here? What are we supposed to do here? This used to be this used to be us. Look at what they took from us. Look at what they took from us. This is what they took from us. And you don't even know it. I don't even know it. I wasn't watching anime memes, vocaloids and shit in 2008 when Tetel Territory and all the good shit was happening, right? Like, I wasn't there. I was born into a nation that had fallen already. Wow. Fucked up. Incredibly fucked up. What are we going to do? We need to, We need a contingency plan. I need to fix this. 
I look at this and I'm like, I need to fix this. I, I need to fix this. I'm going to assume that everyone here already knows the basic history of internet memes, but I, I suppose I can go over it. It doesn't matter. Um, the point I'm trying to make here is what I said about memes aren't even memes anymore. The word has lost all meaning. It's lost its meaning. It just means joke video or joke image. Normally video. Normally short joke video is what meme means. Which is kind of fucked up when you think about it. Because memes are a powerful life force. And now they're just nothing. They're just unusual memes compilation. Like, okay, that's kind of what got me thinking about this. Because you look at, like, the unusual memes compilation videos. Which, out of all the meme compilation channels, unusual memes is, is probably the best one. Most consistent. But they're not... The problem is, right, that they're not memes. They're just slightly comedic videos, um, normally TikToks or stuff like that, oftentimes. But um, normally, a lot of times, animal-related videos. And I suppose cat videos and cat memes are like a long-storied tradition of the Internet. But that doesn't make anything with a cat that's funny a meme. A meme is not... A meme is a specific thing. Um, like, he, like an example of a, a meme that actually exists in the world right now might be, for example, Giga Chad. That's a meme. Or the Schizo Trollface. That's a meme. These are some memes. Um... An example of something that's not a meme would be like these these un, uh, unusual memes, unusual videos, compilations type stuff, or any of these similar ones, which are just short, funny videos, but not a running in-joke or referential humor. They're just funny videos out of context oftentimes not that funny. The only thing that they are close to that could be considered a meme is they often include the perfectly cut scream thing, which I fucking hate, by the way. Like, ruins shit. You, like, the reaction is part of comedy. Not Just having the punchline without the reaction ruins jokes. This is why Young Comma works so well as a format. You get the setup, an expansion of the setup, the punchline, and then the reaction. That's the that's why Young Comma works well for comedy. That's why all gag manga are in that format and all comedy manga are in that format. Most of them, anyway. Sorry, getting distracted because the reaction is important. But you don't get that with the perfectly cut type memes. But I can't even call perfectly cut a meme. You might think, like, well, if they're using that, that's a meme. But it's not a meme. And Because if you, like, would you count the impact font as a meme? No. Like, it's just a part of a format, but it's not a meme in, its, in itself, is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it sucks. It all sucks. Memes aren't memes anymore. Twitch emotes are closer to memes than most of the things people call memes these days. Maybe I... I've been thinking of making a funny song, but it would take a lot of work. It would actually be kind of an insane amount of work. Yeah, I'm a, You know what? Fuck it. My dedication to simple flips, I'm going to do it. Don't mind me just thinking about I've been I've been thinking about this since since last night, just seething about monotheism and how fucking 
I hate it so much. I like, I just hate mono. It was the biggest mistake human beings have ever made. Maybe, maybe aside from deciding to grow grains, I don't know. I need, to, I need to make some food. Monotheism disgusts me on an unprecedented level. God, the fucking dogs might left the fucking fridge open all night by accident. I assume it was by accident, so that's unfortunate. At least the butter's gonna be soft. <laughs> Fuck. Um, but yeah. Fortunately, eggs and butter don't matter. Food, the fridge is open all night. Um, I fucking hate monotheism so much. And I'm not telling you to, um, become a a 4chan pagan because they don't they don't know shit like they literally don't know shit as in like they literally like everything the 4chan pay, any, anything modern pagans believe is pretty much made up uh, I mean obviously it's all made up but it's pretty much um, like uh, was all invented in, in the 70s so nothing not that there's anything wrong with a, a religion being invented recently you know I'm kind of a fan of, a, of a Discordianism which is a, a pretty recently invented religion. And I also quite like um, the Baha'i faith. Uh, our, our, they're not, you know, it's kind of complicated. And can you, I mean, Baha'i still are monotheists, I guess, but it's kind of like one of the more neat ones. I kind of like it. Um, they have great looking buildings as well. They have really cool architecture. That's one of the good things about religion, cool architecture. Um, but the the best polytheistic religion, really, is uh, is is Shinto. Uh, let me explain Shinto to you. So, there's, in my opinion, there's sort of three things that make up Shinto. There's three, three tenets. Actually, really four. There's four tenets of Shinto. Uh, there's three that are to do with like um, action, like like what you should do, and there's one that, and then there's one that's sort of like the basis of all of this. So the three tenets of like what you should do as a Shinto person is have a have a pure and honest heart. Try and act like uh, you know with with respect and well, we'll get into respect in a second. But try try and be honest and true to yourself and true to other people. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is uh, uh, have respect for things that deserve respect. Uh, the, 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 uh, and uh, the third is um, purification, the, like uh, ritual purification, basically. So washing yourself before you go to a ginger, stuff like that. <clears throat> um, which could also literally be be interpreted as maintain a decent level of hygiene uh, because it's possible that's how it, it's possible that's how it started but uh, essentially yeah pur uh, purify yourself if you're going to interact with things that deserve respect and all of this boils down to the emotion of awe um, like how do you know if something deserves respect or not well generally speaking if something um, instills within you an emotion of or uh, amazement, or just uh, you know, maybe for example, someone, someone you know, or so someone's, you, you see someone who's like uh, really good at something that might Im impress you, give you a sense of amazement, or awe, or you know, on a, a a deeper level, maybe a big waterfall or a big mountain might with natural beauty impress a sense of awe upon you. That's how you know something is worthy of respect. Um, oftentimes, these are things that are old. Um, I'm trying to open this bread with one hand, and it's really not not working for me.
yeah, generally speaking, like, things that have been around for a long time are just impressive. Like, and I, I feel this myself. Like, I, like, even, and, like, this is one of the weird things. Like, I would call, for example, like, some of the really old churches, like, like, Canterbury Cathedral in the UK. I've been there. I would describe Canterbury Cathedral as a kami. Uh, because it gave me the feeling that kami gave me. Uh, and kami is, is just the word for the, 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 um, the essence of a thing that is deserving of respect uh, or impressive. impressive. So the, the more impressive something is, the, the more powerful of a kami it is. That's why, like, Amateresu is, like, the sun, because that's, like, the most impressive thing possible. Uh, or the emperor of Japan is a kami, because that's a pretty notable fucking person, right? That's a pretty notable guy. It's pretty impressive that he exists pretty awesome oh um yeah there could be a, there's literally millions of kami there's like anything that you think deserves respect or impresses a sense of like impressing you or being being notable in some way is a kami um and that's cool to me I think that's a good system of religion to be honest uh, yeah. And then the other good thing about Shinto is there's there's no dogma or doctrine or or holy book or anything. So you're kind of one outside of those things. You're kind of free to practice however you want. And this happens in like in Japan, like different regions of Japan have different Shinto practices. Like different temples do things differently. Different regions have like all of those like festivals you see in Japan where they're like have like a little mini shrine that they carry around and chant stuff and all of that like there's not like one way of doing it every single one is different because it, they're all developed separately and they're all based on a common principle but they all kind of their own thing as well and i think that's really cool and that means you're free to do your own thing as well hey remember that video i made ages ago um Games that use violence to criticize violence in the games is bad. At the end of that video, I think I said something about like there's not like like it's a good first step like like uh, so spec off the line and and uh, funny games and stuff like that. They're a good first step, but they they fall short. Um, well, uh, I, I think I made a point of, like, this is a good first step, but we need to keep going. We need to keep investigating this. Um, I think Cruelty Squad is the next step in that. I think it's the next. It's the big keep going. I can't really explain why, but it's just better than all the other. Like, because it's not just violence bad. It's not just a violence is bad violence game. It's way more than that and way louder I feel like there's something good about that you know you know we didn't know how good we had it in the Among Us era we didn't know how good we had it there was so much harvest man every day you know you just sub to like Toast Saikuno Corpse and Five Up and that was infinite harvest every day man we didn't know how fucking good we had it we we've had a fucking dry. I mean, thankfully I've had Cruelty Squad to play to keep me entertained. But uh, well, I was grinding for fish in Cruelty Squad. I, I don't know if you ever played Cruelty Squad, but uh, you, you need a million dollars for something at some point in the game, and unless you really know what you're doing in the stock market from the beginning, which I feel like not possible to know doing a blind playthrough. Like, uh, I, I I have since explored the, the wiki and stuff, so I know that there are actually strats of, like, uh, how to use the stock market from the beginning of the game and, and get a milli natty. But, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no way you would have known all of those strats just as a 
random player. Anyway, so the best way to get a lot of money fast, if you need a milli, to, to, for, 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 really you need it for two things in the game. Uh, there's actually a couple ways I can think of to do it. But, uh, like, for example, there's 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 a, a bank that you can find, but the bank's in a secret mission or secret level, uh, and that has a million dollars in it. The other quick ways to do it would be uh, uh, killing the, uh, the what are they called, like, tri, tri, triarchons or something in, in the level house. One of them gives you a million dollars when you kill them. But killing them is really hard without the the best weapon in the game. Um, and the best weapon in the game is a gun which damage scales depending on how much money you have in the stock market up to a million. And at a million, it insta-kills any enemy in the game, including those guys, which is how I, how I couldn't manage to kill them without it. Because they're they're far away, so like any rocket, like rocket, like RPG thing, it's hard to judge the timing because they're like moving and you can't get close to them. So it's like, uh, you you you, it's difficult to judge the timing and to actually hit them. Anyway, so I had to use that weapon, which is fine. It's, it's not really cheese. It's just in the game for a reason. Um, I think it's probably the intended way to do it. But yeah, so to get that wep to get that weapon to be good, you need a million, and to unlock the level house, you need a million in the first place. So the point being, the be and outside of that, the best way to get m a million is to catch a rare fish in the fishing mini game, either on the level, the casino level where you can catch a wheel of pain, or which is like a fish worth two million or I think I think it's literally called a wheel of wealth or something I don't remember which is a fish worth one million or you go on the level office and you can catch a DOS fish which looks like a, an old MS DOS DOS computer and that's worth three million but I, I never managed to catch that I, I, I saw it once but it bugged out and I never saw it again so while I was grinding fishing to get a million a couple million in order to unlock house and um, put money into the stock market to have this gun actually work properly. In order to, which is the intended solution, in order to defeat the final boss of the second ending, the life ending as it's known, uh, is to to use that gun because it's in it's in that level. Like it, that's the intended solution. So I needed money and I was grinding fish and it took fucking ages. I think I just got ridiculous. I think I got really, really unlucky. the The only reason, I, the only way I ended up doing it is by browsing through the wiki and finding out that like, well, first I had to browse through the wiki to even find the locations where these good fish spawn, and then secondly, I, I, it wasn't even on the strategy guide in the wiki. I just happened to be scrolling through like other. I just like was on the wiki looking through other pages and it turns out there's an item that improves your fishing luck. Um, and so I had to go get that item. Uh, and then I managed to get it within maybe about 20 minutes. I got two of them. Uh, I'd previously gone on one, which I'd used to buy, which I spent immediately on the house level, which was kind of stupid, but uh, I should have spent it on the gun because then I could have... Got... Anyway, I know, it doesn't matter. What game was I talking about? Cruelty squad, yeah. So, you know, while I was grinding fishing, I just I ran the fuck out of content so badly, man. I ended up just watching ASMR videos, which I guess isn't too bad. Nothing wrong with watching ASMR videos. Uh, but man, we didn't know how good we had it back in the day. Back in the day with the 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 Among Us harvest, that was so great to wake up and just have like new disguise toast video, new five up video. You just you just grind through your Among Us uploads for the day. Oh uh, yeah, I mean it did start to get boring. I, it's not like Five Up stops making Among Us videos. He didn't. But yeah, it's good times. <sighs> 
Oh, man. I just watched all of Philosophy Tube's new transhumanism video on two times speed. I don't know why I watched the whole thing. It was just bad. Why am I even still subscribed to Philosophy Tube? Like, Philosophy Tube has not made a good video ever, really. Ever. I don't know why I'm fucking subscribed to that retard. But man, that was a that was an especially bad video, I feel like. The jokes were especially unfunny and the the like actual philosophy that was talked about was like super low tier baby's first intro to transhumanism stuff, you know. Like it was very uh it was very baby mode shit. Uh, like like all of the the references and stuff. There's only like I've, I've read some of them. Yeah, I, I was a I was a transhumanist for a brief while, and now I'm a posthumanist, which is sort of the same thing. I I was very disappointed with the scope of the video because it was just sort of really narrow and not interesting. Didn't really explore the topic in any depth. Like I feel like any any discussion of transhumanism has to start with a discussion of the the or a critique of humanism, right? And that just didn't happen in the video at all. Instead, it was just a bunch of stuff about I well, I don't even know what you would call it. I guess cyborgism, like tools extending your humanity and stuff like that. Um, and, and kind of kind of baseless critiques of, of like really bad critiques of of right wing ideology that I feel like could have been done way better. Like uh I don't know, I feel like the um re- reject modernity like at one point she criticized she's like the right wing phrase reject modernity embrace tradition but tradition is just a concept and I'm like what so you like I think the idea is to say Dugan, oh yeah, Dugan's in this video for some fucking, I guess Dugan's like a mainstream philosopher now because of the Russia-Ukraine thing, which is fucking hilarious, but uh, Dugan's in this video, and uh, Dugan says modernity is just a, a, con- a construct to keep us controlled, and I guess Philosophy Tube is saying, well, so is tradition, but I don't think anyone's arguing that tradition isn't also a, a meme, like a, a spook a concept. I think that the, the the argument is like things things that have been proven to work over a long period of time are often desirable in high stakes situations over risky, uh, untested ideas, right? Not always. Like I, I, I think that any right winger will say that there are certain, like, even pretty hardline right wingers can definitely concede on various traditions. Uh, I mean, a lot of right wingers are weirdly anti circumcision. You know, that's that's one tradition they don't like. Like, there's a, they, they, but anyway, I'm not here to defend right wingers from terrible philosophy tube critique. I'm just disappointed. I don't know why I'm disappointed. I don't know why I expected. It just made me fucking mad. Everything just makes me mad these days. Except being in the CEO grind set. Grusselin. My grussel and my grind set in in cruelty squad. See, that's the world I want. That's the fucking world I want. I'm I'm just, I'm very disappointed in the left. Why don't they talk about things, you know? Why do they just talk about, like, people instead of, like, stuff? And what's that about? I mean, politics in general is like that. It's not just a left-wing problem. I, I, the, I guess the problem is that, like, left-wing try and make their ideas coherent, whereas the right has kind of given up on that. Um... But that just makes the left look even stupider. Uh, whatever. I don't know why I'm fucking talking about politics now. What is this? A politics? What is this? Some kind of politics? What is this? Some kind of cruelty squad? What is this? 
some kind of Gobino's quest. My YouTube channel is kind of like the Gobino's quest of YouTube, I feel like. Man. Among Us. Is this video like five, ten hours long? Hopefully. Hopefully it's ten hours long. I feel like everyone's talking shit about shit they don't understand and pretending they understand it, you know? I feel like everyone, everyone's just saying completely random bullshit as if they understand it. Like, at least I acknowledge it. I'm the smartest man in Athens because at least I acknowledge that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Right? I think anyone who tries to 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 act as an authority on a subject should be mocked and ridiculed. If you're like I don't if you're trying to teach someone something, fuck you. Fuck you. The only way to teach someone something is to do it with them, right? Not to just tell them all all you're doing as a as an expert you know as a uh a fucking enlightened elder is is just chat it's just it's just it's just fucking serving your own ego if you if you claim to be knowledgeable on the subject fuck you yeah this is the no thank you anti intellectualism arc Fuck, fuck intelligence. <laughs> fuck intelligence. Return to monkey. It's like, okay. Teach a, let's say I have a skill. Just for the sake of argument, since this video is in my feed, let's say I'm a carpenter and I have an apprentice carpenter that I want to teach how to do carpentry. Am I going to fucking make a 40-minute a, a long YouTube video explaining the techniques? Fuck no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give them the tools and the, and the table and I'm going to get my own tools and my own slab of wood and we're going to do it together and then they'll learn by doing it. That's the only way that anyone ever learns anything, really. The only thing you can learn by not that seem like you're learning by not doing it is stuff by that by merely thinking about it you're doing it. Like, like let's say, um, uh, his, like historical events. Right? You you can learn historical events by 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 hearing about them without having to do anything because hearing about them is the doing in that situation. But anything that like uh like philosophy for example i it, you can't learn it by just being told it you have to do it and none no no one on YouTube is making like uh, except for me the only real youtuber no one's no one's getting their audience to do philosophy with them because philosophers are terrified. They're absolutely fucking... That's their worst fear is that, that the average person starts doing philosophy instead of just trusting them to do philosophy for them. This is like the worst fear of every philosopher is that that, that ordinary people will figure out how to think uh, and then realize it's not that difficult. This is This is absolutely the worst fear because then people will stop buying their shitty books, their shitty overly verbose books. Just talk like a fucking normal person for God's sake to lose. Why you like this? Cruelty Squad 
If you want to learn about transhumanism, just play Cruelty Squad. That'll give you a much deeper understanding about every single thing, not just transhumanism. That'll, that'll teach you about the world as it is and the world as it will be. That's that, And it won't just teach you because you'll be participating in it. So you'll learn, actually, instead of just pretending to learn while, you, while someone else pretended to teach. Uh, you'll learn about how to shoot guys. And that's and get good at it, and you'll learn how to invest in stocks, and get the CEO mindset, and you'll learn about um, you'll learn about uh, bio slaves, and uh, coffee burgers, and um, all of that stuff. You'll learn about all of it, and you'll learn about how to swing from your appendix up a building, and. You'll learn about um, bioengineering, and um, don't play Mrs's game because it sucks. Uh, it crashes instantly. I don't even know what it's called. It used to be called Taoist Bay or some dumb shit like that, and then you changed the name of it to something even stupid, less memorable. And now there's no way I can ever remember it. If you want to do philosophy, get a pen and start scrolling on your walls. If you've ever written a schizo post, you're already smarter than 90% of people. People value... People oppress themselves. People just oppress themselves too much. Um, they're their own worst cops. They're their own prison guards and cops and mental health asylum doctors. And they live in their own brains and they just beat themselves in the with a boot because they're beholden to consensus reality. I just like that. I just think that's a funny phrase. I, I don't actually don't. I don't actually. It's not too relevant, but they they're uh, they're limited by their own preconceived their own preconceptions of what belies logical thought and their own um, value system regarding well, firstly, well regarding morality and truth, really. Morality, truth, and aesthetics, uh, all, all three of which are kind of the same thing, but I don't know what to call it. I mean, maybe you just call it ethics, I don't know. But, like, they're all bound by their own, and we, we are all bound by our own little game of morality, truth, and aesthetics. And the only thing you can do is just to try and, like, be aware of the, of the game you're playing. You can't ever not play the game. Uh, well, you can. It involves mm-hmm. killing yourself. So, you know, that's like the the spec ops the line. Uh, if you don't literally throw the game out in the garbage right now, then you're you're Hitler. It's like that, but in real life, where if you if if you don't kill yourself, then the best you can do is just be aware that you're evil. I'm thinking of doing something really cringe, but also kind of based. Well. I don't know. Depends who you are, really. Um, I'm thinking of of, uh, of going through a post food arc, and and uh, eating a lot of Huel. You guys know Huel. It's, it's like a meal, nutritionally complete thing. I have it from time to time. Here's why I'm thinking of doing it. Basically, to lose weight because it's it's a uh, it's it's a uh, yeah, it's just a good way to lose weight, pretty much. It's very, very easy to count calories, and uh, it'll probably be healthier than my current diet, because my current diet is kind of atrociously bad. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I was doing okay for a while there, like, like um, when I was first living alone, and with dotes, my, you know, I wasn't amazing. Lots of uh, tendies, but also 
some vegetables occasionally and stuff. But I man, I'm I am just super, super bad diet right now and uh I have no motivation or energy. This is a fucked up Ponzi scheme, right? But like to to in order to get motivation to do something, you have to do it. You have to do the thing and then the motivation comes after you start. But you need motivation to start. This is like one of the most fucked up things. It's actually true though. Once like once you start doing something, you'll be amazed at how quickly the motivation to continue doing it comes. But like starting it is the, is always the hard part. Looking at a blank page and 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 starting writing like as an example is like the hardest part of writing. Um so yeah, like start yeah, then one of the the other thing is just like I don't know. It's going to be very convenient. The problem is they don't let you buy small amounts of fuel. Or, like, it's not cost-effective to buy small amounts of fuel. The only way to buy small amounts of fuel is to buy the pre-mixed drinks, which are, like, almost four pounds per drink, which is, like, pretty fucking expensive for a meal. But if you buy the powders, it's, like, one pound fifty per meal, which is pretty good, actually. Pretty good deal. Um, it's probably about what I spend already the problem is you have to spend a minimum of like 50 quid because you, you they, on their website you have to buy two two things i mean they give you a free t-shirt it's kind of neat but that's kind of a big commitment basically right like it's a big commitment to buy because that's like months worth of fuel that you you're buying i guess i'm not going to exclusively eat fuel It's probably a good thing to just have. It's like um, having instant noodles, but good. And and that should be a good way to lose weight, I think. Like, it should be really easy to count calories. And, and um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I just kind of want to try it. It's kind of like Cruelty Squad moment, post-cyberpunk, post... Yeah, we post food now. Like, food is like some... Like, this is the technological solution to food. It's such a fucking, like, Silicon Valley bug man type thing to do, is to be like, eat it. eating is a problem that requires a technological solution. And I kind of like that. Like, I kind of love it. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious to me, but that's the thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I will occasionally drink Huel. It never leaves me, like, full and satisfied, but that's probably a good thing, right? That probably means I'm getting a decent amount... That probably means I'm getting a reasonable amount of calories. Apparently, like, I don't... I literally don't understand how I'm not losing weight because I know I'm not eating... Like, according to my BMI, it should take about... I, I should be eating about two thousand. Like to maintain my weight, should be two thousand nine hundred calories a day. There's no fucking universe I'm eating two thousand nine hundred calories a day. I just don't eat that much. Like I guess I eat, like I I don't eat healthy, but I like that's a lot. Two thousand nine hundred is a fuck ton of calories. There's no universe where I'm eating that much. Like I'm definitely I'm probably eating way less than that, but somehow I'm not losing weight. It doesn't make any fucking sense. I lost some weight, but then I gained it back. I lost, like, a kilo by doing intermittent fasting. But then when I started exercising, when I started climbing and, and learning to do pull-ups every day, um, I, I started eating more naturally because you need to eat to build muscle. And, like, it's it's uh, it, it just doesn't, like... It, it's not a good idea to, to, to fast while you're also doing heavy exercise. It just doesn't feel like... like there's There's, like... The the my body complaining when I'm fasting regularly is just like I feel hungry and like sluggish and I have no energy because I haven't eaten any food in 16 hours or whatever. That's normal. Like that doesn't that feels like a, a thing. Like that just feels like something that's happening to my body. Like that just feels. It doesn't feel good at all. It feels really bad. But it feels. How do I put it? It doesn't. It doesn't feel like like a problem, right? It feels like like a. It feels bad in the same way that after you work out, your muscles hurt and, like, don't work. Like, 
or like being really tired from from doing a bunch of exercise. It feels bad, but it feels bad in a way where it's like I'm supposed to be doing this, or or like the same way like if you're struggling with a math problem, it feels bad with your brain, like 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 your brain hurts, but like it doesn't feel bad in a painful way. Whereas if I exercise and then and then don't eat. That feels bad in a painful way. That feels bad in a like stub your toe kind of way. Feels bad. Like this is not a way that you're supposed to be feeling bad. This is not a feeling bad that your body is programmed to deal with. Uh, so I don't think I should be doing that. Uh, and also, yeah, you just you just need like you need a bunch of protein and complex carbs after exercise in order to not have muscle atrophy and build muscle, which is what I'm trying to do is build muscle. Uh, not just lose weight, like because building muscle makes it easier to lose weight, and also is convenient for various reasons. It's just useful to be able to lift things, for example. Um, but like, it's not like I'm doing that much exercise. I'm I'm going climbing for like once a week maybe three or four hours, which is, it's pretty, like, by the end of a, a, like, multi-hour session of climbing, you're fucked. Like, you are super fucking tired. It's, it's like, it's like doing hit high-intensity training f over and over and over again for, like, hours, right? Because you keep trying, like, I just do bouldering. I don't do top roping right now um, because you have to pay extra to do that. So just do bouldering, which means a bunch of really technical stuff, uh, like short technical problems. And man, like 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 it's just like you 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 do a fucking problem. You you exert like all of your muscles in one go, and then you like rest for four minutes, and then you like go again, exerting all of your muscles. And yeah, fucking tough. Uh huh. But it would be there's no like, um, there's no good food around the climbing center that I go to. Like, there's nowhere to get good, healthy, protein-rich food around there, which is kind of sucks because you're always hungry afterwards. Uh, so we just end up buying protein bars at the lo at the near sh nearest shop, which are, like, not good. Like, I don't think we should be eating those because they seem like they have a lot of sugar in them. Like, they taste very sweet, and I don't think that's good. Uh... So I think Huel, like bring bring a bottle of Huel to the climbing center, just chug it afterwards. That's genuinely a good solution to that problem. And also it's like, I don't know, I'm definitely trying to justify this to myself right now. Like the only big problem with Huel is that chewing, you need to chew, right? Like chewing is, is a good thing for your body to do. The two things that people complain about with, with Huel and Soylent and the other ones is... Um, Chewing is something that's important for your body to do, and so, you, you know, but I chew gum all the... F I constantly chew gum, so that's not a problem for me. And secondly, that you miss out on all the social aspects of eating, but I don't I do not do any of the social aspects of eating, really. And uh, I'm not going to be on a strict Huel-only diet, so if I do want to go out and eat with a friend, I'm not going to be like, no, I can't do that. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not fucking stupid. Uh so I genuinely think this might be the the play. It's it's gonna be kind of it's kind of weird. Dotsmite's gonna find it cringe because Dotsmite doesn't like Bugman Huel. Dotsmite thinks it's cringe uh, for good reason. Like I understand why, but also, uh, I think there's a there's a counter argument to be made from just pure a, a purely pragmatic standpoint. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's put like I'm surprised at how cost efficient it is. If you buy it, like I, I, the reason, the thing that was stopping me is the price. The thing, the, 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 but but I, after looking into it, it's kind of a big initial investment, and then you just have a shitload of fuel to constantly have, and it's like cheap. Um, so maybe I do this. I'm looking into Bataille. This this Jew is telling me about Bataille. I've seen this guy's channel before. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm I'm trying to figure out like I've been, I was trying to figure out like a 
what's going to be the next big 4chan philosopher? Like, or not even just but meme meme philosopher, right? Because it was it was Sterner, then it was Nick Land. There was there was a little bit of mold bug in there at one point. Um, and now, I guess it's I like I think it's Batai. Uh, I don't really know that much about Batai. I've never read any Batai. And this is how I tend to do things, is just to look at, like, lectures and introductory stuff on YouTube first, and then then I'll go out and buy a book, maybe, or download a PDF, more likely. Um, I also... I have the crying of Love 49, and I kind of want to... I just can't fucking... Okay, here's, here's what sports spurned this whole heel thing, right? I can't fucking focus right now, and I don't know why. I don't know if I'm sick, I don't know if I'm tired, I don't know what's going on. I just can't... Like, my brain, I just have loads of brain fog and no fucking energy. All I can do is, like, 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 I, I'm like, I don't know, I can't fucking do shit. Right? It's been like this for the last couple of days. Right? Like, I can't, I feel like I can't fully appreciate the things that are happening to me right now. Like, I'm just, I have no energy fog. And uh, my theory is it's diet. Right, like, because I just haven't been eating, and I just probably I'm like malnutrition in some sense. And Huel is probably better than my current diet and cheaper. Well, maybe not. You know, like they, they, these packets. Let me show you how fucking this is. This is the sort of shit that I'd be doing, right? Like these packets of spaghetti. These these are thirty nine p for a packet of spaghetti. That's like three meals in there. And I basically just have spaghetti and then just just cheese on it, and that's my meal. Like that, or or I have some Kellogg's Crave, which I've definitely been eating way too much of, and it's delicious. It's like my favorite fucking cereal ever, but I I need to stop eating it because it's just chocolate or hazelnuts. I don't know, but uh, it's just sugar, and it's not. It's just sugar and carbs and milk, and I sh- that it's not. No, it's not good. So I'm I'm thinking I'm really thinking of sending this. I'm really kind of thinking of sending this. Um, it will also help with this because no washing up. You know, it's just you just drink it. It's kind of the best. Actually, the more I think about this, the more I'm like, this is kind of a a great idea. It's kind. Of, I'll save money in the long run. I I will lose weight hopefully, or at least eat more healthily because it has all the nutrients I need, even if it's not as healthy as just eating an actually good balanced diet it's much it's something like unlike eating an actually good balanced diet it's something i can probably actually commit to um because it, because unlike eating a balanced diet it requires less effort than the alternative it's kind of like there's something kind of neat and cyberpunk about it a dystopian about it which i find kind of aesthetically pleasing um it tastes kind of all right it's edible it's fine it's not it tastes like nothing um and uh maybe it'll help me lose weight and it will reduce washing up and chores i i'm I'm struggling to see a downside to this what's the downside the downside is what i spend 50 quid but i it's not like i spend 50 quid on on a useless thing i'm spending it on something which has all of these positives um, and I just made a, I just got my money from, uh, Spotify, uh, just yesterday. So I have 50 quid to spend. Um, I think I just do it. I think I send it. I'm going to go do my, empty the dishwasher and put another load on because no one else is going to do it. And, uh, and then I'm going to gonna buy a shitload of fuel and then I'm just gonna be a fuel drinker from now for for a little while see how that goes in my life eh motherfuckers really have a a very human very anthropocentric view on things so do I it's hard not to but it's something you have to keep vigilant about. These days, I generally think that, uh, it 
David Graeber's whole uh, the truth of the world is that it is what we make it and whatever he said is is more and more wrong. Uh, I really think humans have very, very little influence over the things that happen to us. All of your political movements or whatever have basically just been puppets of other events, external events. Um, the easiest ones to talk about are uh, the feminist movement could only happen because of the invention of safe, cheap, effective contraception in the form of birth control pills and condoms becoming popular or prevalent and also the automation of common household chores like the invention of the washing machine and the dishwasher. Uh, dishwasher, 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 sh 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 Pretty much that's why feminism happened. It had very little to do with desire or anything like that. The obvious other example is um, the end of feudalism, the end of the medieval period, pretty much caused by the, the, the plague, the Black Death, and uh, maybe a little bit uh, technological advancements, just certain technological advancements, mainly uh, steel, cheap steel. Uh, so, generally speaking, the only things that that actually change the world are these sorts of uh, technological things, or uh, just other natural factors that we don't really have any control over, like plagues, natural disasters, luck, stuff like that. And the only way anything actually changes for the better on purpose is when some someone figures out how to make it profitable or less expensive than the alternative. Like uh Yeah. Generally speaking, solutions come from that, some technological solution, rather than which enables a social change, rather than the other way around. A social change, somehow, it's never happened that way. I can't think of one. Can't think of a social change that has predicated a technological shift that it enabled. Doesn't really happen. The, well, the only time it might happen is if if things are close already. Um, like uh, going to the moon, Apollo missions, right? Like they, they, they wouldn't have happened if it weren't. I guess war is actually kind of the obvious one, right? Like like wars, wars make technology happen. Militaries, like all of the improvements in technology after World War One and World War Two. Right. Caused by the war, rather than the other way around. It wasn't really technology that caused those wars. You could probably make a butterfly effect theory that it was in some senses, um, particularly World War One. And to some extent World War Two. But War is the only situation where it happens the other way around. Uh, but even then, it's an Ouroboros, right? Like, the, tech, the, the war shapes the technology, and then in turn, the technology shapes the war. Again, the world wars are very obvious in terms of World War One and, and air, to, air, air warfare. What's it called? Navy, Army, 
What do they call the sky division? They just call it air? What the fuck's it called? Well, those guys. Yeah, Air Force, that's what they call it. Like, the technology changes the shape of the war. And obviously the second world was even more obvious. Um, like, generally speaking, humans have, are just sort of vessels through which techno-capital flows, I guess. And either all of the good inventions... All of the things that have a positive impact on my life. You know, though, we might have a famine in the next couple of years. Have you been paying attention to this? We might have a famine. Soil depletion is at insane rates and not so, like no one cares about soil depletion at all. And uh, there is currently a, a fertilizer has like doubled or tripled in prices. Uh, it, it's going to be bad. We're, we're probably going to have a famine of some kind which is going to be interesting. What are we going to do about that, eh? I don't know. I'm not sure what to do about it. They're probably going to push veganism super hard during the famine. Um, they're going to be like, it's a... Yeah. It's kind of an orchestrated thing as well, which is what's weird. But uh, most famines are in the modern age at least. Yeah, I guess growing your own food is a good way is, is probably one of the better ways to stave off famine. If you have the ability, potatoes are probably the best crop. Potatoes and sweet potatoes and yams are probably the best crops to grow by yourself. Um not really practical to grow any other grains on a small scale, like wheat or rice or anything like that it's not really practical to grow on a small scale generally you want these uh, root, root grain type things to, I forgot what they're called but eat those ones I guess and then they're going to make us I don't know I'm I'm kind of okay with it I guess I don't know Uh, you don't really need that much food to live. Like, I find it, there might be mass starvation in, in certain third world countries and in America. I find it hard to believe it'll happen here for a couple reasons. English soil is some of the best in the world, um, or British soil, I guess, is some of the best in the world, firstly. Uh, like we we don't really use that much. I mean, we use fertilizer, but not that much compared to some other places. Um, we we are most we're by fairly food self sufficient because we're an island nation. Um, and uh, we have some precedent for uh, like like uh, uh, the, after World War Two for like uh, up until the the like. 70s, early 70s, I think, maybe late 70s, mid 70s, somewhere in the 70s. There was like, like you could get government issued bread and 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 stuff like that. So we have some precedent for that sort of thing, for the government stepping in and and uh, managing food prices uh, for low low quality but abundant food like bread. Uh, might be harder to find your your luxuries. Um, but, uh, you know, as long as you have potatoes, milk, um, butter and oats, you can pretty much survive. And some uh, flour, water, the basic, basic basics. Like, there's stuff you can do. You can't really, you, you won't be super healthy, but you can survive on flour and water, pretty much, and yeast. Uh making bread, making flatbread, stuff like that. A bit of butter. Butter is very, very useful. Um, uh, I don't think people realize just how, uh, like, if you're in times of scarcity, butter is the difference between life and death. Like, it's not even a question. Uh, yeah. You, you, it, it, it's a big deal.
dairy in general. Uh, and I, I, milk prices are going up, but I don't see there being dairy shortages, not severe ones. I mean, I suppose there could be. Because, I mean, it's not impossible. It's actually not impossible that, 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 that well, at the very least, dairy prices increase drastically. I suppose it's not impossible. Uh, not going to be as bad as it is in America, though. America's really fucked. Because, uh, I don't know, they just, they just, they just have a really weird food system over there. I get, I mean, we also have a weird food. I'm not, like, confident. Let's get this straight. I'm not confident in any of this. I just think it's possible. Like, I think it might be bad, but survivable. Uh, yeah. Thinking bad, but survivable. Might be a bit, might be a good time to move to a, a more stable country, like somewhere in Asia. It might be time to pull a pull a neck land and move to China. I'm I I'm, I'm I can get down with China. I I never said I don't think I've said anything bad about the Chinese government. I have a lot of respect for the Chinese government. <laughs> they do they do some good shit. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I have a little while to worry about that. But I, you know, at least a, a, I, I don't think anything is going to become noticeable until 2023, really. Until next year. It's your time to start planning now, basically. Um... on some potatoes and stuff, but I don't really have anywhere to store a large amount of potatoes long term. I might be able to fix something out, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason that the elites have been pushing veganism so hard. It's because they they are orchestrating a famine. Um, this is not a conspiracy theory, by the way. Like, it's not like they're doing it on purpose. I mean, some of them might be, uh, but it's not like they're like they're trying. They're they're actually believe it or not, they're they actually are trying to do what's right. Uh, they just have a weird way of going about it. Like they're not actually mustache twirling villains who eat babies or whatever. Queuing on people think, but uh, you know they're they're act they're actually trying to help. They're just they're just like fucking weird about it. <laughs> like they're just fucking weird about it. But like the the whole investing all of this money in meat, fake meat stuff is because they know that we're gonna be fucked in the next few years, and that meat is gonna become way more expensive. Because we live in times of of, of massive, of unprecedented abundance in meat in history, pretty much. There have been times when meat has been plentiful um, in countries that are doing well in history. Obviously, this has happened lots of times, like in uncountable times throughout history. But it, it's never been to the point where the lower social classes can still afford to eat meat-based meals since prehistory pretty much uh or not not in a society like this not in a mass agricultural urban type society like that's just never happened really it's it's you could eh okay there's some i can see how you could debate it uh but yeah oftentimes lower lower costs had to survive off of grains and and eggs and dairy, which is fine. Honestly, that's like um, I wouldn't even personally complain about that. Uh, yeah, I actually wouldn't complain about that too much. Um, 
it's mostly the work they had to do that that sucked. They had decent food, um, depending on where you lived, of course, and what time. Like, generally, I'm really generalizing here. It's like, I have a bad habit of doing that. I'm just trying to look to the past for advice on how to survive times of hardship. Like, there are, I, there are really ridiculously cheap meals that you can make, is my point, right? Like, you you can make some pretty fucking cheap meals, and they're not you're, you're not going to be able to survive as a bodybuilder eating five thousand calories a day. But you'll you'll live, I'll live, and it's possible that stuff like fuel will even be promoted like massively because that's fairly cheap to produce, cheap to buy. Um, it serves all the purposes that the people and the powers that be want it to serve. Um, you could even argue that it, you know, obviously controlling food is like one of the oldest, if not the oldest form of social control, second oldest, maybe third oldest. I'd say oldest is controlling women, second oldest is slaves, third oldest is food. Although food and agri- I mean, slave- slavery and agriculture kind of go hand in hand. You don't really need slaves if you don't have an agricultural society. So... Those two kind of come together. Uh, there weren't too many. I mean, there were slaves. There, there, there are exam- plenty of examples, but they were generally prisoners of war, not like slaves, economic slaves. Anyway. Why was I talking about slaves? I literally don't remember. But controlling the food is like how we ended up with social hierarchies in the first place, right? Uh, So it serves their purposes to get more control over the food. Why do you think Bill Gates has brought up math? Look up, look up Bill Gates, like farmland or whatever. Like just, just look it up. He's built, he's bought quite a lot of it, and no, he's not really doing it. No one's sure why he's done it, but I, I know why. It's because. You need to control the food. That's like the ultimate source of all power. It's just been shifted over to controlling the wealth. But ultimately, the wealth is meaningless if you don't... Con- the only reason that they want to control the wealth in the first place is because it gives them control over the food. Uh, I think it's fucked that... Uh, not that I think it matters, really... But I've just been kind of a little bit seething about it recently. That like libs focus so much on on um like it's it's kind of a weird um hypocrisy in 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 leftism where it's sort of like supposed to be a mass ideology of the working class, which is the majority of people. And yet, modern leftist rhetoric seems to focus super heavily on minority rights. Not like obviously, minority rights are a good thing. Uh, it's just a weird thing to focus on because, by definition, they're minority rather than focusing on helping the average working person. Uh, like. With, with economic policies or something. I guess it's just a better way to get votes. Hopefully they do away with democracy in the next few years. They won't. But can we just get it? Can we just get it over and do, like? It's like we don't need the illusion anymore. Everyone's given up on the illusion. Like no one, no one still believes that, that it's a real thing or that it is viable. I guess they do, though. That's what's weird is that, like, most people kind of do, especially in America and, like, certain European countries, Germany and France, I'm thinking of, really. Uh, They kind of do still think it's a thing, or at least in France they're a bit more wise to it, but they still think it's attainable or desirable. Hmm... Yeah, it's it's a questionable kind of deal. That's why China's good, because they don't even pretend, you know? Like, the thing about China is that there's nothing different about them than any other country, really. And even, like, the idea of moving to China for economic future security 
is questionable. Like they they have there are some sorry there are, okay there are quite a few signs that point to a continuation in China's growth. Like what they're investing in, like what their economy is invested in. Um, but there's also signs that that don't. Like uh, there's there's questions about how well China is going to be able to provide for its massively growing middle class. Obviously, I, I'm. Why am I talking about this? Like I'm some sort of political fucking talking head. Like I know what I'm talking about. You guys probably know way more than me about this shit. I'm. I'm just thinking about how to survive a famine. Uh. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess uh. What I said before: rice, beans, potatoes, butter, oats, wheat, flour, milk. Uh, these are these are sort of that's it. That's really all you need to survive. Or just skip the middleman and just buy fuel. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Because fuck it, right? Like, what happens if there's no food and they're like, we need everyone to be eating because we need a workforce, right? Uh, there's, okay. I don't think they're going to do, like, a thinning of... I know, like, the the sort of conspiracy theory is, like, that the, there's depopulation attempts. I, I kind of don't think that's happening, like, I kind of wish it was, <laughs> in a sense. That would be an interesting challenge. Like, how do you overcome the depopulation attempt? Uh, I guess the answer would be to just accumulate wealth, which is kind of boring, but, you know. I'm starting to have weird regrets about not... You know what I'm regretting? I'm... I, like, I knew about Chainlink back before Chainlink blew up, and I, like, considered buying some Chainlink because I'd seen people talk about how it was going to blow up. But then I was like, nah, these crypto people, they're all just, like, like schizo. And to be honest, there was, there's always, like, 50 different coins that people are saying are about to blow up. Um, but there is, there is somewhere in the multiverse, there's a me that invested in Chainlink and got rich. Uh, I'm already rich, it's fine. Um, I think I think something there must be some way to have economic gain from from the in upcoming uh, famines. Not sure what though. You know what I feel like Cruelty Squad really fucking gets. Cruelty Squad, amazing game. I gotta say, amazing game. Go torrent it. Obviously, I would never encourage purchasing digital goods, so... But I'm pretty close. It's a great game. I recommend it. Give money to the developer if you want. Uh, But uh, anyway... Sorry, I'm kind of out of breath because I was just doing pull-ups. What Cruelty Squad really gets is this thing that, that Nick Land talked... It's something that no other piece of media that I've ever seen um, has ever really understood, uh, ever. I think I think it is the first piece of media to ever actually nail this. It's something Nick Land talked about in, in Cryptocurrent. Uh, now, if you haven't read Cryptocurrent, uh, which I don't blame you for at all, <laughs> um, uh, what he says is that he, he, he talks about Foucault's concept of... I believe Foucault said... Uh, called it a homo criminalis a a sort of like once the concept of prisons and the the criminal class was was created it split it changed you were no longer a human you were a human who was either a criminal or capable of becoming a criminal Um, and in the same sense once crypto was invented and bitcoin was invented you're uh, everything you do is either economizing or capable of becoming economized because now literally anything can be a speculative speculative asset. Um, I, I don't. I think he calls it like homo economicus or something, but economizing human. And that's the thing that like that's an aspect of sort of the future cyberpunky future that no one else has ever explored before in in art that I've ever seen. And um, 
uh, uh, quality squad just fucking nails it first try. Like the, the, it's it's incredible, really. Like the way people talk in the universe, the way the universe is structured, like just just nails a sort of like sat- satirical, but like also like weirdly believable take on on this this future that we're creating. Well, it's being created for us, where everything is economic like you you see like in in there's like a level where people where you're at a club and like people are talking about like i i wish i could remember the exact line but but someone in in like the club says like uh like multiple people in the club are talking every, everyone's always talking about something about economics in in that in the game but like one of the people says something about how like i'm i'm transacting right now and or, or something and one of them's like like I'm, like my bioeconomics is like doing. I I don't I, if if I had the fucking actual quotes, I see if I can find them. Okay, I found some of the dialogue. Uh, there's actually so many good lines from from the levels called Neuron Activator. Uh, here is all of the dialogue from the, the random people at, at Neuron Activator. A good party requires a blood sacrifice. Everyone's here to become a better, more complete person. Nobody's saying it out loud, but I'm glad they purified this place. That's a reference to in-game lore about the... Um, so so the, the, the level is set in a, like a, at a, a party at an abandoned or like a, a reclaimed warehouse, or it's, it's like an industrial building of some kind uh, that is now turned into like a venue uh because uh, there was like some there was a like a a, a bunch of, there was basically every, this like an industrial district that used to be like broke uh there was like a mass murder uh, like everyone died and then it became like a spot for for hip, like hipsters uh I'm the most powerful person in this room I control the situation everyone's dancing to my tune uh, theory time. Us civilians are a writhing mass of fresh flesh, vaguely connected by a vegetative psychological link. Our value is determined by an extra-dimensional being who is toying with us. We have no capacity for thought. We are simply an ecosystem of flesh. I thought that was a pretty good one. Uh, let's see what else we got. There's definitely more. That's that's not true. I I I remember reading more quotes than that. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. There's definitely more quotes than that. Maybe this will have more. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Biogenetic value accumulation. I'm transacting value to everyone around me. I'm keeping my body primed and my mind sharp. All of my co-workers want to fuck me. I'm here to increase my libido. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. One of them just says, I'm a graphic designer. That was funny as fuck. Yeah, anyway, thought it was kind of cool. There's a bunch of great stuff in this game. All of the dialogue is great. I mean, the best one in that level is when the beat drops, I'm going to fucking kill myself, obviously. But, uh, yeah. This is just like Gorbino's quest. This is the Gorbino's quest of life. I, 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 I've started saying that now. This is the This is just like Gorbino's quest.
I'm just reading through all, the, all of the dialogue on the wiki now. I heard the jackpot from the gun machine. It's very powerful. Some kind of advanced super weapon. I actually know what that is. That's the that one. But uh, it's it's like a one in five hundred chance of getting it. So I haven't. I didn't grind for it. I guess I could. There's not really much point. I already have a weapon that's an insta kill for everything in the game, or almost everything in the game. One of those open carry guys, I respect that. That's funny as fuck, because you're always walking around with your, your guns out. So are you one of those open carry guys? I thought that was kind of funny. That, that, I don't, I'm just reading quotes. I'm just going to... I don't know. It's Seaside Shock is pretty funny. Because that's a, that's a, so that's a, a level about a bunch of like, uh, Silicon Valley type. Every level's about a bunch of Silicon Valley types, but it's about a bunch of like, here, let me read the description. Uh, group of seasteaders, basically. It's, it's basically about like, imagine a bunch of crypto people, but in this case, they're biocurrency, uh, speculation instead of crypto but it's a it's basically imagine like a bunch of crypto people are like we're gonna make our own sovereign nation uh but they can't afford it so they ended up just buying a big boat and um there's a bunch of funny ones uh i never had sex before i moved here but now i'm fucking a different bio slave every day like they're like what's a bio slave who knows and this is this one's this one's good if you if you like Moldbug. There's a if you think about it, the joint stock company truly is the perfect model for all governance. Hilarious. Facts about the average titanium princess resident: high IQ, software developer, INTJ. That's me. Hilarious. Very funny. No one who, no one cared who I was until I put on the mask. Haha, <laughs> oh my, I know it's plebeian, but I simply love popular culture. Sorry, what did you say? I was thinking about controlled depopulation. There's too many of us on this planet. That's me. They're having us do crunch time. Blah, 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 blah. I haven't done, I haven't got, the Dark World is the only level I haven't done yet. I have, I, I need to, uh, it's complicated. To kill is to live, I live a warrior lifestyle. I follow the teachings of fuckbro99. Eat raw eggs, sperm, datura, and you can finally achieve what I have fully natty if you have what it takes. Pretty good, pretty good. Last night I got up to take a piss and guess what I saw? A real life flesh rat. I immediately reach for my home defense Zephos and slice that fucker. The super AI emerges from an extremely pornographic ultra hyper suck and fuck. That just sounds like something Nick Land would actually say.
You ever tried the new coffee burger? That shit slaps. I wish I was at home playing Gorbino's Quest. I've heard rumors of a weapon older than God that taps into the unbound potential of the financial world. Has to be bullshit. That's the weapon I have that's also equally extremely powerful. But uh, depending on how much money you have invested in the stock market. But I'm super rich, so it's all good. It's what you get for grinding fishing. You get rich. Hell yeah, rich. Anyway, just, I love, and like, a, a lot of my, the stuff I like about Cruelty Squad is just the gameplay. Like, I, I like, obviously the aesthetic and the world building and the, the mm-hmm. it's funny and epic and very astute. But, like, a lot of what I, like, none of that matters if it's not a fun game to play, right? Like, that's, the, I, I, I saw Zero Punctuation's review and I thought, like, he kind of downplayed how good the gameplay is. Like, he said it was a, like, a, a decent, and he sort of described it as, like, effective, basically. Like, marginally, like, 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 competent, basically. But I would think, it, I, I, I personally think it's great. Like, I think the level design is all, like, top tier. I think the, the like, the way movement and shooting feels is, like, top tier. It has, it has bee hopping in it, so it's good. Uh, I think all of the different, like, uh, like you, you have a game where you can unlock a grapple hook, which just completely changes the way, like, that you move around the environment. Uh, and also, like, this, the, the weapon variety is so insane. Like, there's so many different weapons and implants you can get that just completely change the way you play. Like, like a triple jump, double jump, the, the, the grappendix grappling hook. The, the big like suits of the like the the really powerful armor, the multiple different really powerful armors that that don't really do that much to be honest and aren't really worth wearing because yeah you you can get like stealth stuff, uh, guns that are just like one shot any enemy versus also guns that like don't do that like there's so many different possibilities for builds and yet somehow none of them are like too overpowered and none of them are like too underpowered like you could you could feasibly run any build that you find like i run i always use like a, a speed build with the, with the the maximum speed implants even though that lowers your armor to basically nothing uh and you can play like that if you you know i i i have a lot of fun playing like that pretty much every level has like multiple different ways to go about it uh some of which are like clearly not intended but like they still just work in the game like one of the levels i just uh used the grappendix to like literally get outside of the map like they don't they don't put invisible walls up or anything this is one of the things i like the, the i've only ever run into one invisible wall in the entire game which was weird because you you can get behind that wall anyway it doesn't really make any sense why it's there. Like you can just on the, on the casino level that if you try and grip an up onto the roof of the casino from the front, there's an invisible wall which stops you from going like going onto the, the main section of the roof of the casino. But if you're in the casino, there's literally a hole in the roof which lets you up there. So I don't know why they walled that up. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway. Like you can, so you can sort of get out of the levels a lot of the time. They don't really make any effort to stop you. Um, and the, like the explosive weapons, they have area effect damage that goes through walls. So it's a perfectly valid strategy to group appendix out of the level, traverse the fucking outside of the level, and then shoot your target 
was a grenade launcher or like a, a rocket launcher through the wall and then go back. Like that's a perfectly valid way to play. And I, I actually did that for a level. That's how I beat one of the, I don't remember which one, but I beat one of the levels like that. Oh, um, uh, miners, miners something. It's the, the mine level. Uh, yeah, I'll, put, I'll find it. Uh, Miner's miracle. Yeah, I just I just grew appendix outside of the. I I I tried it the normal way, a couple of times, um, and then I was like, I wonder if I can cheese this. And of course, it just lets you cheese it because it's a good game. And I was like, hell yeah! Uh, and it felt good to be able to do that. It didn't like it didn't feel like I cheated or like I'd done it the easy way because it was like not easy to navigate over there with like a, it took skill. I, it felt good. And it felt like the game was, like, actually... Like, that's what, I guess, people talk about when they talk about, like, player freedom and it feeling good. I've never really got that, but now I get it. Like, yeah, it does feel good. But, yeah, the like, the movement in the game just feels great. Um, the shooting just feels great. There's, there's like... like the, the, the level design is excellent. Um, like, even though... Like, after a couple... After a little bit, your eyes get like your brain just accepts that the style is just normal, and then it actually becomes really intuitive and like pretty easy to understand or read the level design and and remember your way through levels and stuff it's a, it's a, it's a really well designed game um, not even to say anything about the the plot or the messaging or anything like it's just a solid game it's just a really solid Quake meets Hitman meets Deus Ex. Uh, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's just the best of everything. It's like, yeah, it's like insane Hitman. Hitman, yeah, I, I think Hitman meets Deus Ex is how they market it. Um, which I guess is fair. I would, I would put Quake or like some boomer shooter in there as well because of the movement. And like, if you don't b hop, the movement speed is kind of slow. But who's not b hopping? Come on. And uh, the it'll, the game also has like great potential for casual speed runs. I looked up the actual speed runs, and they're honestly so optimized they're kind of unsatisfying. Like most of it is just like turning on ricocheting bullets and then shooting the guy from the like just like right at the beginning of the level. It's kind of bullshit. Like it's it's not really uh, that like it doesn't have as much like the movement is advanced enough that you can has a really high skill ceiling. Like the movement has a, should have a high skill ceiling, but the speed ones don't really need to do that because the levels are so open. They normally just uh, they're kind of like hit, if you've ever seen speed runs of the 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 modern Hitman trilogy where they just sort of like walk in and shoot everyone from from miles away. Uh, they're just kind of like that. Which I it just isn't really that. I mean, I guess it makes sense. I mean, obviously that's optimal, but it's not that fun. But when I was just doing it for, like to beat my own times without looking up strat like the official speedrun strategies or anything, like just just trying to beat my own times, that's super fun. Yeah, I was just kind of spacing out for a lot of that club. I just watched from dusk till dawn. Uh, I kind of wish it hadn't been spoiled for me, but also I knew what it was about for a long time, so I don't think it would have possible. It's pretty difficult to avoid spoilers for that movie. Um, if you haven't seen it, I generally am not a spoiler-conscious person, but there are certain movies where, like, the movie works way better if you go in blind. Uh, From Dust Till Dawn is one of those. There's a, a twist... Uh, that I don't want to spoil. So skip this segment if you haven't seen the movie, or just go watch it, uh, whatever. But anyway, I just watched it. Uh, fucking weird movie, man. <sighs> fucking weird movie. Not great. Um, couple things I didn't like about it. Firstly, I wish Quentin Tarantino... So Quentin Tarantino's character is, like, a fucking evil 
piece of shit, right? Like, I, I hated him in the movie. And, yeah, he died in a brutal way, but I really wish he'd, like... I it, I feel like it, like I wanted to see, I wanted to see him die in a more brutal way, kind of like I I didn't feel like it was that satisfying the way he died. Um, like I, yeah, I don't know. I just felt like it wasn't that satisfying. Um, and the, and the second thing is. The big fight scenes, particularly the 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 big ending fight scene, they're so it's so awkward and like bad and like terrible. Like there's a bunch of interesting action ideas in there, but the scale is all messed up. Like half of the 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 again, this is your last chance to um, last chance to avoid spoilers for the big twist of the movie. Um, I, I don't say it lightly that it's a movie that works way better without uh, going in blind. It's, it's way better going in blind. I, I don't say that about many movies. So if you haven't seen it and you don't know the twist, go watch it. Uh, or don't, whatever, I don't give a fuck. Anyway, uh, so all the vampires just sort of stand around. <laughs> just, they just sort of walk around weird, like aimlessly, while like awkward fights happen uh and it, it's just super fucking weird like they don't yeah it's it the the big final fight feels like a fight that was supposed to have like epic music go along to it but it doesn't have epic music go it just has like kind of generic orchestral music instead of like a, an epic rock and roll score like it feels like it was edited for that but then also it's like a big. It has like the problem with all like big cr- crowd of bad guys, versus you know where they can't all attack at once. But it doesn't even try and hide the fact that they can't. Like they just literally just stand around waiting to get punched. It's fucking like weird. Uh, it's like really awkward and sometimes hard to follow. The a- the action is actually often kind of hard to follow there are there are, there are yeah it's fucking weird there's there's a lot of weird hard to follow action like it which is weird because the action scene that opens the movie is really well shot and really readable um so it's, it's weird that like the bigger action scenes are so not readable at all um Obviously, some of the 90 CG doesn't hold up, but the effects makeup holds up really well. Um, it's it's a cool B movie. Like you have to put a bit of your imagination into the fight scenes and just imagine them being better than they are, because there are some cool concepts in there. But uh, yeah, I just wish they were like executed better, I guess. Like, I'm not really sure what you do in that situation. I guess you just, like, direct your fight scene better. You just, like, I don't even know how you do it. You just have to, like, give some reason for the vampires to be attacking one by one. Otherwise, it just feels, like, weirdly slow. Like, it felt, like, the the final action scene just felt, like, weirdly, like, kind of, like, stilted and, and awkward and slow. Like, awkward is the main word I would use to describe it. It just felt kind of, like, weird and awkward. Even down to the dialogue, like, like, uh, one of the characters is, like, like gets gets bitten by the vampires and is like, kill me, Kate, kill me. And then Kate is like, I can't, but then kills him. Why would... doesn't make any sense. Don't say I can't. Like, she's already had her character arc where she became a badass. Like, that's, that scene has just literally just happened. She just became a badass. So it doesn't make any sense for her to be like, I can't. And then it, doesn't make, it makes even less sense for her to then literally, just after saying, I can't, shoot him. It doesn't make any sense. It's like a really weird decision to do that. Uh, 
I mean, I think I, I, it seems like a, a sort of deal where it's like they probably shot this and thought while they were shooting it, thought we can sort of patch this together in editing to look better. But then when it got to editing, they couldn't do it. I've been in situations like that on shoots where it's like, well, as, as an editor, really, where it's like clearly the director wants something and you can't do it because the coverage isn't there. Uh, so it's like you, you do your best. But doing your best normally involves putting some epic music over it and amping up the sound effects, and they didn't do that, which is a really weird choice, which makes it, like, highlights the awkwardness. Like, the fact that it's kind of quiet makes it super fucking awkward. Like, if it was blasting rock music in the background and cutting quicker, it would still be weird, but it would, like... Like, the scene doesn't have any rhythm to it, you know? Like, a good action scene has a rhythm. Like, you, it could have been, like, the, uh... You, you know the, um... The big the big church fight scene in, um... Kingsman. Like, that's what that scene wanted to be. That's what it should have been. But, uh... It, it wasn't. And that's, that was disappointing. But, on a conceptual level, the movie's great. The first half of the movie is, is great. And... There's plenty of great gags and it's yeah. Weird fucking film, but I appreciate its weirdness. I'm a Rumbo Clout in swag. <laughs> Got my Huel T shirt. Got some shit. Got my shit. Got loads of fuel. Damn. God damn. God damn. There's a lot of fuel. God damn. All right. Let's. Let's. I'm gonna have a. I'm. I'm currently tidying myself over. Because I. 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 Uh, I'm in the mood for some chicken wings. So I have to wait till twelve. Because I'm gonna go to the shop and buy chicken wings to make myself. Shop doesn't open till 12 because Sunday. So I guess I'll have some Huel right now. My first ever Huel. Okay, I got the a book with it that tell me what I want. I'm a Huligan apparently. That's kind of ridiculously cringe. Okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ones. I actually saw the um this hot the hot and savory ones because I kind of like savory foods more than sweet foods. So I was thinking of of doing that at some point. Um, I didn't know this existed. This black one. Less carbs. Sounds good. But, uh, hey, whatever. Still plenty of protein in the, the normal one for your recommended daily amount. All right, making the, let's, okay. This is what it looks like. Kind of, isn't that kind of crazy? Like, it's kind of, they definitely put a lot of thought into making it look like futuristic or whatever, you know? It's like making it feel like a sidewalk. It gives me the CEO mindset. I would say that this is definitely helping me to, to gain a CEO mindset. Let's, let's, try, let's get in there. There it is. There's my fuel. Smells like nothing, really. Okay, so there's my fuel. Now what do I do? First, you have to choose how to have your meal. As a meal or a snack. One scoop is 200 calories, two scoops is 400 calories. Um, I guess I'm going to have two scoops. 
here's my thingy. They gave me a thingy. Oh, and it opens up like this. Oh, that's fucking weird. What, what is with all this? It has a thing inside of it. Do you know for hot water? Make sure you lock the bottle. Caution when shaking. I often make that whew noise after I sneeze. Okay, so what do I do? Add 250 milliliters. Oh, 500 milliliters is what I need here. I'm just saying, if there's any, is there anything else in this thing? Not really. Okay, so 500 milliliters of water. I'm going to need to find a way to measure that out. Wait, I can probably measure it. What are these scoops? I guess, I don't know what that is. Like. Um, how am I going to measure 500 milliliters? Be an is there a line maybe? No, that would be that would be sensible design philosophy. Okay, well we have this thing. Five hundred mils is half a liter. So I just fill it up to that. Okay, and then two scoops. There's one. There's two. Okay. I don't, are you supposed to put this in? Like, what even is this thing? I guess you put that in then. For at least 10 seconds, I now close this up nice and tight and then shake it. I used to work at a bar, so. Okay, let's see, like whatever this the thing is in there that's like, well I don't know, but I'm just going to drink it and see what it's like. It tastes alright, it's not smooth though, it needs more smooth shaking. Let's see now. It's better, I guess. That's fucking weird. Oh, there's actually a line on here. Hey, they did actually invent a thing. 
Alright, now I just have to figure out a place to keep this. Just reseal it. Oh, there's actually an... Oh, that's what that is. It's an ice barrier. I see. Interesting. Storage. Store in a cold, dry place. Uh, I guess this cupboard is probably the best place to put it. Yeah, I guess it, it doesn't taste particularly strong of anything. Uh, yeah. I mean, it kind of does, it tastes like, it tastes different from the pre-mixed heel that I've had at the store before. Definitely. Which is kind of weird. I'm not sure why, but I wouldn't say it tastes bad. It tastes a bit more savory than, I almost said slavery. <laughs> it tastes a bit more savory than the, the pre-mixed one, which I don't dislike. Sponsorly, sure. I think I put too much water in it. But, uh, yeah, I could see myself, sort of. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit weird, but I could see it. Maybe not for every meal, but the convenience kind of outweighs the, the, it tastes not good as chicken. I'm like, I just need, I like, I got my, my caffeine pills, like, I'm just post, I'm just, a, I'm not even a human anymore. It's like, I don't drink coffee, I have caffeine pills, right? I don't eat food, I drink fuel. I don't smoke, I just vape. Like, I don't even know what else to replace here. Just a VR headset as well, to be the ultimate post-human. I don't know. Go to PS4 controller. I don't like the PS4 controller really. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Xbox controller type of guy, but those might want it. And I'm probably never going to use it. I mean, it works. Hmm. I think I might have put too much... I don't know. I'll work it out. I'll work out the kinks as we go, I guess. I miss the keyboard. <laughs> Talking to a bitch. There's many such cases. This is what you don't want to happen, right? You're talking to a bitch, and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty into uh, Linux, actually. Uh, I, I uh, actually use Linux at home. Oh, Anon, that's so cool. Uh, tell me more about your Linux desktop. Well, I have a ThinkPad X220, and um, 
uh, one of the reasons I like Linux so much is the level of aesthetic customization, but also practical customization for productivity. So, for example, I run BSPWM. Uh, here, do you want to see a picture of, of my desktop? We, we call it a, a, a rice. Oh, Anon, that's so cool. I would love to see a picture of your desktop. Actually, let me just get my laptop out right here, and I'll show you. Here's what my desktop looks like. As you can see, I'm running Polybar, uh, URXVT, and my you know, my color scheme is, is sort of consistent throughout the whole thing. Oh, Anon, that's so cool. Uh, uh, maybe I should come around to your house and you can teach me about Linux sometimes. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Come, you want to come around over cl after class? I would love to, Anon. After class, she comes over to your house. So here's my desktop. Let me show you my desktop, Rice. And then your desktop, Rice, is jarringly different from your laptop, Rice. Anon, I think I have to leave now. Oh, no, don't leave. Don't leave. Look. No, Anon, it's too jarring. Your desktop, Rice, is too jarringly different. No, look. Look at my phone. My phone has a, it looks cool. It's also drastically has a completely different color scheme and wallpaper. I don't. We just can't. We can't do this. I think we should. I think we should just stay friends. This is the sort of thing that happens if you don't make your rices consistent across all of your devices. Uh, if you don't have your color scheme and wallpaper at least aesthetically complementary, if not the same, across devices, this is what will happen to you. Don't let this be you. Don't. There's been many such cases. Don't let this happen to you.